Facts with Adam Curry for January 24th, 2024, episode number 96. It's a new year, and we're still here. (laughs) I'm Adam Curry coming to you from the heart of the Texas Hill Country. Time once again to spin the wheel of topics from here to Northern Virginia. Please say hello to my friend on the other end, the unimitable, the one and only Mr. Mo Facts. How you doing, Adam? Mo, I'm good, man. It's so good. You know what? I'm just smiling from ear to ear. I, I, Tina's like, oh, a new Mo Fax, and it hasn't been half a year. I say, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting the new year off straight. We're getting one in January. I love it, man. I love it. Everything everything good there uh, at Casa Mo? Everything is wonderful. I can't. I can't. Uh, life is great. I mean, we hit. Now, did we did we record after Christmas? I think we did after right? Christmas, but before New Year's. Right. So I think it was like on the twenty seventh, twenty eighth, somewhere around in there. Right. So you had a good New Year's. Everything cool with the fam. Everyone. everyone Every, good? Everything's going good. I am so happy to hear that. Well, I'm excited about uh, what we're going to do today. As usual, Mo has put a show together. I have no idea what we're going to do, so I'm going to spin that wheel. The big wheel of topics, round and round it goes. Nobody knows where it stops. Well, Mo knows because he did uh, do all the work and put it all together. So I look forward to talking about the topic for today. The topic is... Pizza potluck. Oh, yeah. Okay. Potluck, potluck. <laughs> we know what that means, don't we? could be anything at this point. Potluck always drives us into crazy corners of the universe. Episode number 96 of MoFax with Adam Curry will be... Potluck. Potluck. Ooh, right. yes. Potluck, yes. All right, Mo. Let's this, get to it. So with the potluck, for maybe people that's the first listener, we cover maybe topics that may not be connected or connected in three to four segments. I think I have four segment, segments this time. Um... It's one of my favorite things to do, and kind of sad. It's the last one we're going to do on this iteration of the show. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, I hear you. It'll be the last, yeah. the last potluck ever. You're in luck, everybody who showed up today. <laughs> it's history, it. folks. This is it. History in the. Ma- By the way, if I can just say, thank mm-hmm. God for Verizon, because you sound so good. It only took us four years. It, it, it's <laughs> internet poverty, is what it is. You, That's, it's true. You were in an internet desert all this time. Yes. Hmm. It and it's only good, better man. sound to come. We got some treats. Uh, uh, thanks to the uh, uh, producers. We got yes. some even better sound quality uh, around the corner. But let's get to the first block. This is block A, and this is going to be Fonny versus 45. Oh. <laughs> Woo! Okay, good, good, good. Because there's all kinds of stuff, and uh, I'm sure everyone has only half the story. Let's go ahead and jump into number two. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who is investigating Donald Trump's alleged efforts to overturn his election loss in Georgia, is expected to present her case to a grand jury next week. So, of course, Trump is lashing out at her as his fourth indictment looms. They say there's a young woman, uh, a young racist in Atlanta. She's a racist. And they say, I guess they say that she was after a certain gang and she ended up having an affair with the head of the gang or a gang member. And this is a person that wants to indict me. She's got a lot of problems, but she wants to indict me to try and run for some other office. Okay, okay. So so all of that was bogus and completely untrue. But let's just pause on the part where he accuses Willis of having an affair with a gang member. Why would he think that or say that? And why would he put that baseless claim in a campaign ad released last week? You know, this is interesting because I, I kind of forgot the the gang member part. All I know is the lawyer that yeah. she had an affair with him. Is he a gangbanger? No, 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 no. This is this is classic forty five savage. Got it. Okay. He, he, this is him over delivering. <laughs> it, 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 he he sets it up because it's been for people that don't know. Fonnie Willis has been tasked with cleaning up Atlanta. Let's just give some background on what she's mean, doing down there. You mean cleaning up the, the mess that uh, after the 2020 election? It, it goes even farther back than that. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that goes back. It's the thing called Operation Triple Beam. And you got Cop City down there. And it's, it's a whole thing. I remember so, Cop City, but Operation Triple Beam? Yeah, I don't want to slow yeah, you down, yeah. but this is no, something no, I've not it's, heard it's, of. It's pertinent. Because she's been on a roll. 
And I think that what gave her the audacity to think that she could take on somebody, a troll, <laughs> like 45, a master troll. Let's put some respect on it. Like 45 Savage and come out of this unscathed. So what I was saying was she over he Trump over delivered as he does. If he says he has something, it's going to be bigger. Right. This is this, this is the sales salesman in him. Mm-hmm. This is the heel. If we go back to wrestling, <laughs> uh, right. uh, the wrestling analogy that we did on, uh, on I think, show 45. But I digress. Let's get up to speed. Um, so she has this case going on with Young Thug from YSL. And also, I think YFN, um, it's another gang in Atlanta, oh, which they called us. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is, this is Young Thug where I even played a clip on No Agenda. I probably misidentified that as drill rap. Right. But uh, Young Thug, they're like, oh, no, you know, he's just playing a character. He's just playing a character in, uh, in, his, in his music. He didn't really kill anybody. Correct. And it's the whole thing with can they use the lyrics and that thing. And it's, mm. this case has been drawn out. So that's where she was uh, allegedly sleeping with uh, the guy she was defending at the time oh. <laughs> from YSL. <laughs> And just because I don't know. So YSL, uh, Young Thug is a part of YSL? Yes, he's the quote unquote leader. And I said it on purpose. (laughs) Uh, He's the leader of YSL. Um, Well, the face. Let's not get too bogged down in that. But that's, that's that's the genesis of his first claim. But as we always know, there's another shooter drop. Let's go ahead and get to the next clip. This is where the campaign ad he created that they're all up in a, a, a fuss about. Biden's newest lackey, Atlanta DA, Fonnie Willis. So corrupt, Willis got caught hiding a relationship with a gang member she was prosecuting. Again, bogus, baseless, and completely untrue. (laughs) Moments ago, NBC obtained an email sent from Fonnie Willis to her staff responding to the Trump ad. She slammed the ad as derogatory and false and urges her staff to remain focused. The ad tries to add legitimacy to the claim by sourcing a Rolling Stone article from January, written by music and culture writer Andre G. Here's the article, which talks about how Fonnie Willis, back in 2019, served as defense attorney to an Atlanta-based rapper named YSL Mondo. Now, here's the context. Mondo is a co-founder of the rap group YSL Crew, Uh whose most famous member is rapper Young Thug, who now prosecutor Fonnie Willis has indicted, along with multiple members of the YSL Crew, in a sweeping RICO case that alleges that they are not a rap crew. They are a gang. See where this is going? And note again that Willis was not Mondo's prosecutor at the time, as the Trump ad claims. She was his defense lawyer. The Rolling Stone piece does not in any way say or even suggest that the two had a relationship outside of their professional one. Meaning Trump is doing what Trump does, taking a fragment of something that is true, that Bonnie Willis knows YSL Mondo, and twisting it into a perverse false claim in order to defame and discredit her in a way that is particular to her being a woman. And a black woman at that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. So, of course, there's no dispute that she had a relationship with this guy. There is dispute. Oh, there and there's is. real there's there and there's real well in the in the it's there's rumors. Mm-hmm. It is out there what he couldn't prove only to set up what he could prove later. So um yeah. Um so we got Mondo, YSL. This is what happens when you get too comfortable. And this is what I was saying before about black women were going to be the fall guy for all of this. If you uh, notice. Uh, yeah. And she's even seeing that. She, I don't know why she didn't see it before. You're going after a <laughs> former president who is as petty as they come. Yeah. Uh, and this is the same guy that brought Bill Clinton's accusers to, to a presidential debate. Yes, so, he'll do anything he needs to. <laughs> yeah, right. And and with this kind of hit history or innuendo around you, I don't see why she took the case. But does she have a choice? Is Wait, the question. So, so yes, you did say this. I remember. So you're saying that black women, the Democrat Party, really is going to let black women take the fall. How I see it is, 
either you're going to prove you're effective or we're going to destroy you in the process. Right. So it's a, it's no risk for them. No risk at all because they've proven themselves to say, the Democrat Party is saying, you pro- made all these promises what you could deliver. Now deliver or you're no use to us. And if you're no use to us, we'll then burn you. W- well, we won't. Yeah, we'll, yeah, let we'll let the you other side yeah, do we'll it. We'll let you burn. Yeah. Ah, and, it, it, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll use you as a sacrificial, you know, as a, as a, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, but yeah, as a sacrificial you know, lamb, like hold you up and say, look what he did to the black woman. Martyr is what martyr, I'm looking martyr, for. Martyr. Yes. yes. There you go. That's what uh, Joy Reid is already running on here. Yes. Got it. So before we go any further, there's this clip of Fonnie Willis in 2020, uh, excuse me, 2020, where she says how she will handle an employee who, who sleeps with uh, uh, someone in the office. Um, it is saddening to me if young women felt like they came to work and they were, one, even judged for being a woman, but two, if certainly they felt uncomfortable within the workplace. Mm-hmm. Um, that will not be something that is allowed on my watch. Um, supervisors under my leadership that are not encouraging and building up my staff will not be supervisors long in my administration. And um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. Let, let me just say that. Um, you know, we are at a place in society where things happen in people's relationships, husband and wife. Sometimes there are outside relationships. I don't think that that's what the community is concerned about, although there, you know, there might be a, a moral breaking in that. I think that what citizens are really, really concerned about is if you chose to have inappropriate contact with employees. I mean, there's nothing that I can say on it other than it is distracting. Um, it is certainly inappropriate for the number one law enforcement enforcement officer in the state. Um, and it just, it, it really, really saddens me. And it will be very unfortunate if the taxpayers of this community have to pay for <laughs> any of those lawsuits. Exactly. That's the way I feel about it also. Whoa. Yeah. That's the smoking <laughs> gun right there. <laughs> Oops. So, before we move on and clip three, there was something that Joy Reid did. That I want to point out. She went from saying Fonnie, Will- uh, Fonnie Willis represented uh, YSL Mondo to knowing him. Mm-hmm. The big difference between knowing someone and representing them. So I just want to point that out. And our undercurrent of this show is going to be propaganda. Yes. Spotting it and maybe some tactics on how to deal with it. But well, I just what, want to point that out. What I find interesting, and I'm seeing this more and more, is Joy Reid is being read in. She knows what's, she knows the plan she knows it's she's different she used to be like a weekend host and she would be something to laugh at it feels like she's much more integrated now in whatever schemes and plans are going on she too has to approve her value this is not just politicians Uh, this is (laughs) this is not just the Soros sisters Mm -hmm. this is not just you know elected officials this is all of you that because we got to go back and remember how they gained power it was at the will ruin you will, you know, will be the, 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 you know, the squeaky wheel. If you don't give us what we want. And that was at the time. Remember they wanted Kamala Harris mm-hmm. as VP. Mm-hmm. Uh, they wanted a Supreme court justice. They got it. And at, and now it's like, okay, we delivered, we gave you what you wanted. Now, now show us how good you are. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, we will embarrass you in the spotlight. And, and, and joy Reed is, on the hot seat right now. Can I ask it's kind of like with coat. Go ahead. Can I ask you a culture question? Yeah. Yes. This hair, the blonde hair. What is up with that? Is this is this uh, a trend? This type. Of, her hair is weird. It just looks weird. I know third rail, but here I, I am. No, I, I don't. Because <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know if she's trolling. Cause she's she's went through an assortment of different hairstyles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But but the blonde itself, you know, I don't, I don't know if she's trolling because the same thing with uh, Jean Claude Pierre, whatever her name <laughs> Jean-Claude is, Jean Claude v- Pierre Van Damme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a it's a sense of or or, or a a portion of trolling the way they handle things because they understand the internet. And how the internet will react okay. to the hair. All right. How the internet will react to the to the binder, to the gaslighting, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 this struggle session that they draw you into. So I, I don't think she's oblivious to how the hair comes across. I think it's more to to a uh, uh, increased engagement for people to talk about it okay. and not talk about the propaganda itself. Got I it. just want to say that, you know, because that's the whole thing about propaganda. It pulls you in. And what we talked about, this is a tactic of war. This is like a companion <laughs> of the last show yeah. to see how we can be pulled in to talking about what they want to talk about. It's like, yeah, look at my hair. You know what I'm saying? Don't listen to yeah. how I'm trying well, to manipulate the, and, you. And the reason why, I mean, I have some standing in this, although there was no right. social media when, when I was on MTV, but I had the hair and that hair was because that's what everyone, all the guys had that hair, you know, but all the rockers had that hair. And I'm like, okay, I had that hair. Um, and it, it changed a little bit over time. So that was kind of the, it was the culture of the moment. So that's why I asked, is this the culture of the moment? And, and the answer is yes. The culture of the moment is to, um, have something that people will talk about, which, you know, of course you hear Dvorak, he's like, she's wearing Trump's hair. Okay. So it works. Yeah. And we can't forget one of the other tangibles that they wanted was the crown act. Where they could wear their yeah, natural yeah, hair yeah, 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 yeah. and not be discriminated against. And we can't forget MSNBC, and I forget her name, uh, the one they fired, re- well, maybe a year ago. Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany, it's, it's her name, her first name's Tiffany, but she got fired by MSNBC. Remember when they had that big round table with all the black boule women? And they were like, we need our makeup. You know, black makeup is a special kind of makeup. Tiffany we Cross, need to have people- you mean? Tiffany, Tiffany Cross, Cross that's yeah. it. Yeah. They had this whole big powwow, boule powwow, of how, you know, their, uh, which, is, which is true, their products are different and how makeup is different for them, yeah. only to go and um, copy um, hair that's not natural to us. Right, right. So now we got to get to the other shooter drop because it's not about YSL Mondo. This is about uh, the real reason why she should be removed and disbarred. Well, calls are growing for Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Fonnie Willis to step down from the election interference case against former President Trump. I mean, can she do the job with all that's going Ooh, on? That's the is. question. Wow. She herself is snarled in a messy love triangle, allegedly, and faces calls to resign for paying her alleged lover. Nathan Wade, big money, $650,000, despite him having no experience. She put him on the Trump case, arguably the biggest case of her career, and paid him. And now stuff's happening. Steve Harrigan on the story in Marietta, Georgia now. Steve. Harris, the fight today is over divorce proceedings, whether or not they should be unsealed and whether that district attorney, Fonnie Willis, should be forced to be deposed to give testimony in this divorce case. Another hearing coming up next month will look at whether the two behaved improperly and whether they improperly used taxpayer money to take vacations. (laughs) Many are already beginning to say that the district attorney should step aside. How did this news break? How did this come out? Is that the the ex-wife? Did she make the trouble? I'm not sure how it actually now that's a good question because I don't know where I've heard about it on the internet and we're going to get to the possible role of the ex-wife mm, in this Okay, but I think Trump and his team knew all along because you do opposition research right yeah and it's like oh we got a one two punch the jab would be YSL Mondo and then the knockout is uh, is the, prod, the, the lawyer Yes, hmm. which I have. This is why we do the show because nobody talks about it in the way we talk about it. No. Uh, what's being not discussed is the colorism aspect of this. <laughs> Fonnie yeah, Williams. I am so I love this show because to me this was like ah uh, you know it's like look I've been through divorces and like, it's really horrible people are mm-hmm. bringing this stuff out and you know it's a okay it seems a little more complicated i remember um was it not uh who was the marcia the oj trial marcia clark marcia clark and mm-hmm. the other lawyer and they want they didn't they wind, yeah didn't they wind up getting married i don't know if they got married but, but i know they were in a relationship at yeah. the time and that yeah, was a big story yeah. a subplot yeah and to me it's you know exactly to me this whole thing was a little bit like eh, it's subplot um 
I kind of glossed over it. It's like, ah, you know, whatever. But now there's colorism involved. You have my attention, sir. Okay. The colorism aspect of this is Fonnie Willis is a fair-skinned woman. Yeah. Uh, Nathan's wife is a dark-skinned woman. Rut row. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a culture break brother what was what was he thinking well what he was thinking is moving up the ladder he was sleeping <laughs> yeah, his way up i know he was, and, and to be fair he was doing a kamala harris mm-hmm. now everybody wants to put it on kamala how she got her placing how she got her uh position he's doing the same thing see i'm a i'm a <laughs> i'm a equal uh equal distributor offender. Yeah. yes yes <laughs> so also, Fani is the home wrecker in the situation. Here you have a couple that's been married, yeah. for, I think, for 26 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she comes along with her big bag of of, of politic money, mm-hmm. of, of uh, mm-hmm. actually the the government's money to to uh, distract take, him take, away from his home. And take vacations together. <laughs> Which I, I don't understand. Like, it's way... What? How stupid you, are you? How stupid are you is the question. Right. Which which leads us to say, how can you be in this position and be that dumb ah. with the paperwork? You know, and, and this is one of the issues with affirmative action. Are these people really qualified? Mm-hmm. And that's why I said my issue with affirmative action is the first thing, which I'm a supporter of it, if it's done properly, to say the first qualification should be. You're qualified. Qualified, <laughs> you right. You, yes. Right. We don't lower the, we don't have lower expectations due to whatever color you are. And this you is know. and this comes at a time when DEI uh is very much in the forefront because it's being seen as the problem with aviation, you know, the the problem with all kinds of things. Lots of corporations are quietly, you know, rolling this back, like, oh, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. You know, the it, it the timing could not have been better for this. Well, let me give you a, a little bit of insight to that because I was in a corporation that bought into DI the whole way. Those HR and the DEI specialists that came in, they came in very heavy handed. And it's the same thing going on in corporate America, as I stated previously, in politics and the source system, everything else. You came in with this HR DEI grift saying how you could deliver. And we don't see anything being delivered. So so same thing. Exactly right. Like all we see is quality of product services going backwards. Yeah, and and you came in and upset my workforce mm-hmm. with this. Not and this this is the irony of it that the you know the people that was in power signed off on it, but they take no accountability and they're going to just kick it back over to the DEI special said, "Well, we were sold something else. Yeah. This is not what we were sold." <laughs> I love when the wheels come off of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and you're going to have a mass cleanup for lack of a better word, of all of this problem, because I've seen, I saw it when they came in. It was brow beating. It was, um, like I said, heavy handed, coming in, talking to management, crazy. Like, you know, shut up and sit in the corner kind of thing. You know, to uh, check, check your privilege. To management? Huh? To yes. Management? Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> because they had them in the corner because we got to look, George Floyd 2020 is when this all kicked off. Right. And the corporation was like, we just don't want to be racist. Do whatever you got to do to us. We just don't want to seem racist. And <laughs> Whip me again, please. <laughs> yeah, which there's a pseudo masochistic kind of thing yeah, there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. which we covered that in the previous show, how. That's crazy. Pe- yeah. That's so crazy. Um, I don't want to get, I don't, don't get too far away. But I just want to lay all the, lay, like, show the lay of the land of what's going on down in Atlanta. Yeah, so, Fon- so Fonnie is, she is like the worst because not only is she a homewrecker, but she's also the ladder that this guy's climbing up on, moving away from his dark-skinned wife, which, of yes. course, creates lots of strife in the community, in the culture. Right. So it's bad, bad, bad all around. So getting it from, from the uh, DEI uh, white folk and from the home front. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I, now I feel bad for Fonnie Willis. Well, there's only one thing Fonnie can do, and that's... <laughs> To go to church, church. number six. <laughs> All the glory I receive is his grace, yeah. not a perfect me. Yeah. We are at a time in history, people, 
hear me on this. We are at a time in history when you can no longer sit back and just let other folks do it. You cannot expect black women to be perfect and save the world. The Lord is completing us. We are not perfect. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. We need grace. With that kind of support, we will move mountains and do Jesus' will. Stumbling all the way. Stop, 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 stop. Because this is a long clip. So yeah, I just, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> stumble, stu stumble, bring in stumble. Yes. Stumbling. Not stumble, not past tense. Stumbling mm -hmm. all the way. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to which is, which have is right, issues come up. It's right out of scripture. Stumble, yes. To stumble. Stumbling. It's right out of scripture. But this also goes to show you why the black church has lost any credibility because you platform a woman that's in the middle of breaking up a, a, a marriage, a, a, mm -hmm. a marriage, and you allow her to use a, a government agent or a government, you know, <laughs> <to> use the <laughs> pulpit. <laughs> yes. To I justify. If, if I stumble, I don't get to get pop up on stage at my church. <laughs> Say, hey, hold on a second, everybody. I'm a good guy. No. But they have power, you know, because mm -hmm. this uh, the black women, and we're not talking about all black women. Really, we're talking about the blue lay black women because they're the only one that really has enough clout to lean on the church to say, hey, I'm sure that pastor was like, I don't really want to just to put myself in his shoes for a minute. I don't, I don't, complete speculation. I want to put it up front. But I'm sure the call was like, hey, we need to, we need somewhere for fire to talk. And he's like, I don't really want to get in, in the middle of this. But you have to realize his biggest uh, value for value base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's black women in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, he, his boule phone was probably called and said, you're going to let Fonny do what she needs to do and say what she needs to say because there's bigger implications if she's taking off this case. Right. All right. I rolled it back a few seconds here. So we'll Okay, cool. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. We need grace. With that kind of support, we will move mountains and do Jesus' will. I am, so now it's about Jesus? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. See, we are all flawed, sinners, unworthy, imperfect, <laughs> damaged, uh -huh. but we are qualified upon his call. <laughs> you can find common ground with people of all different ideologies if you simply commit yourself to being obedient and steadfast in your efforts and his work. So is that her version of repentance? He without sin or she without sin. They cast the first stone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Our woman. Uh, now I'm in. Now yeah. I'm in. Our woman. Remember that was the, that was the thing in itself. Yeah. So. All right. So what we have here is her going to the church and saying, hey. I, I know I, I've fallen just like you've fallen. But it's not working. And, and, and I don't think she, she understood how she, how she appears because this is even more reason for people not to be interested in voting for Democrat. Because this is what it all boils down to is the 2024 election. Of course. All of this. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Especially in Georgia, which was, you know, one of the swing states. If you have people not activated or black activated, like we always talk about in black politics, <laughs> <clears throat> then no low turnout, 
then you can't steal it because they, they're going to steal it. If it's close, they are going to steal it just like they did in 2020. Oh, they will definitely and, try. Sure. But the Republicans are going to steal just as hard now. They've, they've, they've woken up to this like, hey, hey, we know what you're doing. We're going to steal it, too. Right. So this is what this, this is not about the voters rights or anything like no, that. No. This is about keeping it close so we can if, if it's stolen, it could at least, at least be plausible. Right. So, it, but her speech is not working. So now we have to go to get some tea. And this is uh, <laughs> this is um, I, I, my name. Uh, what is her name? What is her name? I Just that know. fast. Yeah. Um, who, who we're going to hear talking, you mean? Yes. Uh, I don't know. H- hold on. I got to look it up now. Hold on. It's her colleague. Tasha K. It came back to me. Oh. Tasha K. This ain't tea. This is wine because she's she, her and her wine. She has one of the biggest followings in uh, for tea channels. There is. She gets all the big interviews. And is so she, she comes. She local. Is she a local. Uh... She's local to Atlanta. Yes. But she's also has one of the one of the most uh, potent followings on YouTube. Oh, OK. She's a TikTok YouTube lady. Yeah. yeah and she got sued by Cardi B for millions of dollars. Mm. For uh for defamation, mm. but she didn't let she didn't relent. She just keeps coming. So <laughs> she's saying that black women are not buying it and they're abandoning Fannie Willis. Fannie Willis. Six explosive allegations and a story swirling around Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis. In a new court is filing, eight? Willis. This is seven. Oh, I must did I skip over. Yeah, I think. Yeah, excuse me. All right, go. you want you want me to hit, you want me to hit eight instead? Yes, please. Okay. If you do that, and then we come back to seven. Yeah, sure. What about Nathaniel's wife, <laughs> Fanny? All that money you allocated tricking on a prosecutor. Tricking. Tricked his wife out of $1,400 a month alimony payments and even took some of it back using the debit card out the same account. That he put the money in from contracts he allegedly f***ed you for. Where's the justice for this black woman when she's saying I've been married to his ass for 26 years. Raised his children. And he somewhere, is he somehow found a way to get, a, to get around the law? To only pay me $700 every two weeks and then he splits that with me? This is the one you getting up on a church podium here to stand beside? That's the problem. Women find it's men. How you in church to my when I found this black man? You didn't find him. <laughs> He's fucking you. <laughs> Full way up. That's just that's just what it is. And you didn't think that they was gonna find out. But I'm just like, where's the justice for this black woman over here? That helped to build up the very man that you are enjoying right now for the small price of six hundred and thirty thousand dollars every year. So the state's money. Now, who paying that money? We have we got questions. <laughs> we got questions. <laughs> oh yes, this is she's in hot water now. She's in very hot water. She is in very hot water because her normal base that's turned no, on. It's turning on. It, her. Turning. It's on cracking. Her. It's yeah. her foundation is cracking, uh, cracking up under her feet, and she understands once she's. Rendered ineffective, she will be out with yesterday's trash. Where's this? Has this guy spoken at all? This uh... wisely, so no. <laughs> okay, that's too bad. I'd love to hear him. Oh uh, well, <laughs> let me there, tell you, <laughs> there's no win for him no, because right. he's he, he's going through it with his wife. Yeah. He has these allegations, and then he's on the hot seat of coming after Forty Five Savage. Mm-hmm. So there's no there's no win for him. And I would like to under, ask him a question: What did you expect? Yeah, all of her Boulay sisters didn't want this job, and you took it. If you come to me, and you her whole platform is elevating women, especially black women, elevating elevating women, and this coveted position of going after the quote unquote biggest races in history. Right, right up there with Hitler, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and nobody wants the job. That that would have sent off alarm bells to me, but he was sleeping his way up, so he had to do what he had to do to get where he wanted to go. Yeah. 
Now, there's some questions about his wife. What, what her motives are, and is somebody putting a battery in her back? Seven. Sex explosive allegations and a story swirling around Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis. In a new court filing, Willis says the wife of the man she hired to be a special prosecutor is interfering with this case. The document alleges special prosecutor Nathan Wade's wife is using her divorce case to impact the Fulton County case investigating former President Trump for meddling in Georgia's 2020 election. Atlanta News first political reporter Doug Reardon is live tonight outside the Fulton County Courthouse. Yeah, very soon, guys. Just a couple of weeks, a judge today said that D.A. Willis will have to go into the Fulton County Courthouse on February 15th and be there in person. He was very specific about that to go ahead and respond to these allegations of an improper relationship with the man she hired to be a special prosecutor. But we'll know more before then. He also ordered that she had to written uh, to respond to these in written fashion by February 2nd. And so uh, that wasn't the only court filing that we got today. You just mentioned it uh, a moment ago. But a few hours after we learned about that court date, Willis's attorneys made another court filing accusing Wade's estranged wife, Jocelyn, of interfering with this case through that divorce proceeding. The filing says she served Willis with, uh, Willis with a subpoena to testify in the Wade's divorce case to, quote, embarrass and harass her. The document even went so far as to accuse Jocelyn Wade of conspiring with defendants in this election indictment to derail the case altogether. Oh, OK. So the question is, did uh, <clears throat> this is this guy's wife? The, the woman scorned, did she, uh, was she uh, approached by uh, 45 Savage's team? That's the question. Mm-hmm. Which I would, if I was a bet man, I would say <laughs> my yes. money would be on yes. <laughs> yeah, I'd say yes. But at the same time, I'm sure she wasn't, she didn't have to be her arm twisted to go along right. with it. If that's how it played out, because as you stated, a woman scorned, uh, especially as she's giving you 26 years of her life. Well, she, of course, is being abused by the other side now. I mean, that, that's, it's, it's, she's going to get abused by them because she thinks that she's doing good and, you know, and the subpoena and all that, but it may not end with that. I mean, there'll be a lot more hell to pay. I think she has a lot to gain mm. because he was hiding money. So this helps her. Like, she may have not had the resources to follow the money trail are there any kids like, are there any kids in this uh, marriage that i don't know i didn't really get into the personal part okay. of it because right. just out of sad. respect yeah it's but it, sad. right right but I'm, what i'm laying out is the fact that all these outside forces coming in to say <clears throat> to, say to him hey you want a job you know if this was a shoe on the other foot where a, a woman a man in power was doing this to a married woman uh and oh. pulled her away from her husband right yeah we know there will be no uh, understanding no. <clears throat> for the man, you know, for either man in the situation. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it's this way, you know, the media and the pop political structure is, is softening the blow. So that's the whole funny situation. It, but there's more to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be- because at the beginning, when Fonny first start holding her grand jury, there was this weird girl named Emily Kors that came out. You might remember her. She was the uh, the grand jury forewoman. Yeah, um, vaguely, vaguely. Vaguely. So let me bring you, let me refresh your memory. This is uh, The View reacting to her uh, media tour. Okay. So remember, if, do you remember after Trump lost the election uh, and he was caught on tape? He lost? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and he was caught on tape telling Georgia election official Brad Raffensperger, this is what he said, I just want to find 11,780 votes. Remember that? Okay. Who among us? Trump still denies he did anything wrong, of course. Uh, But the special jury in the investigation into whether he and his minions tried to overturn the election results are recommending indictments. Last night, thank you. Last night, the jury, the jury four person could barely contain her excitement on CNN about what's going to happen next. Take a look. Did the grand jury recommend indictments of multiple people? Yes. It's not a short list. I mean, we saw 75 people and there are six pages of the report cut out. So we're talking about more than a dozen people? I would say that. Yes. Did you recommend charges against Donald Trump? I really don't want to share something that the judge made a conscious decision not to share. I I will tell you that it was a process where we heard his name 
a lot. When this list comes out, you wouldn't... There are no major plot twists. Ah. Uh, she'd be keeping her big bazoo shut, <laughs> this girl. I mean, why is she so going different. around talking? She wants attention. You know, everybody is a Kardashian now. Everybody wants attention. Yeah. And that's what this is about, I think. Well, I think she called that right. But did you hear the crowd's reaction? Yeah. They, they weren't on board with her. Because that's, that's that, that she's not one of us. She's not a chosen... You know, uh, uh, entertainer or celebrity. Yes. She wants to be a Kardashian. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah, crowd yeah. was kind of, cause normally the crowd goes, claps and like seals whenever. Yeah, let me, let me hear know, the end there. Let me hear the yeah, end. Yeah. There. Comes out, you wouldn't, there are no major plot twists. Ah, uh, she'd be keeping her big bazoo shut, this girl. I mean, why is she going around talking? She wants attention. You know, everybody is a Kardashian now. Everybody wants attention. Yeah. And that's what this is about, I think. Uh, ooh, yeah, you're right. What was that? Uh, just, I mean, just me, just me listening, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's usually a, that was a punchline. It's supposed to be yeah, laugh. Yeah, it, it certainly was not the uh, the desired response. Right. So maybe they're over there thinking in the uh, in the view audience, but no, they will not be asked to return as audience members. No, we, we <laughs> laugh when we say when the, when the, when sign, the sign says, says laugh. laugh. You should be laughing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So this is when Sonny chimes in, which Sonny's on the hot seat too. I'm, yeah, I'm well, going to forewarn people because I your, might not be. Here's your colorism yeah. coming back in. I'm but, sure. I might not be around when I, when the shoe is to. Well, I'll be around, but you know what I mean, like to you know fully this. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to fully discuss it when it happens. Um, <laughs> it's going to see a mass exodus of color off of these stages, off of these shows, out of these positions. And what's going to happen is you can't go fully back to a white male no. and you're definitely, and you're definitely not going to put a black male in there. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be go to the white female. Oh my God. Yeah. This was a, this is, this is how it's all. This is how affirmative action first played out. <clears throat> we'll let the first, you know, batch through. They'll prove to be um, inadequate for the simple fact that, we didn't. They, we didn't choose qualified people, and then when that happens, we, you know, we had to settle with the middle ground of of a um, minority, but it won't be a racial minority, right? So Whoopi, Sunny, all of them, you're gonna. I think you're gonna see it after 2024 if it if the election then goes successful as a court, according to their plans, you're gonna see a mass firing. Of a lot of people, especially women of color. So, hmm. uh, or colored women, as I like to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're still on that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, yeah. so, this is Sunny uh, chiming in with part two. But I think that she could destroy this I, case. I will say, I was thoroughly enjoying the interviews, you know, like everyone else. I was giggling and cracking <laughs> yeah. up and stuff. But then when I put my federal prosecutor hat on, yeah. I was like, oh no, she's compromising the integrity of the investigation. Right. Because the grand jury, and any grand jury investigation, especially the federal ones, are, are <laughs> secret proceedings. Yeah. And they're supposed to be secret proceedings. Like, you could get fired as a prosecutor for leaving a um, a deposition out uh, in your office mm-hmm. or taking it home and not putting it back in the locked chamber. Like, it's so serious because people die, witnesses have died when their testimony is released. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that she's like giggling and joking, um, I'm surprised. I know that the judge gave them guidelines and said, like, don't name names. But if you're like, uh, <laughs> it's about 60 something people, <laughs> we heard Trump's name a lot. I mean, you know what's happening. And right. It's just, I, I, I think she looks a little excitable. <laughs> excitable. Uh, okay. So this, I believe this is one big blunder because Fonnie Willis arresting Trump, getting him a mugshot. We saw the reaction of the mm. quote unquote streets. <laughs> you know, He's one of us now. Right. And now you put him on the same side as young thug. Against Fonny? <laughs> what were you what were you thinking? You know <laughs> this is great. Yeah, yeah. That that is wow. 
and, and a swing state that you need to win. That's that's the other. That's the home home of hip hop. Home of hip hop yeah. too. Home of hip hop. You know, right? Of southern hip hop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ah, that's good. That's but. Just, there's more. Just Wait, but there's just, more. <laughs> just elevated 45 Savage even more by putting him on the same ticket as uh, as uh, Young Thug. Right. But there's more. Of because course, Of course there's more. <laughs> of course. When, when you start to look into Emily Kors, she uh, has a very interesting background. And this may be uh, a show history because I think this is the first Tim Cass clip being oh, used. Wow, we're, we're playing pool boy on the show. Uh oh. Yeah. Beanie <laughs> Man 11. She's a witch. Incredible. Yeah, her bonkers Pinterest account, which promotes witchcraft. Uh-oh. Promoting Shucks. witchcraft does not make you a witch. <laughs> Practicing <laughs> witchcraft does. Does she practice? Thank you let's, for clarifying. Let's go that deep. was a 20. Yes, that is, that is, that is technically the truth. Thank you very much. Where? Literally yeah. the truth. Oh, so is this like a. Is this like a an ad for us to read about how to become a witch? Are, we're going to learn how to become a witch today. She's totally into witchcraft. Oh yeah, I want to. I want to learn. What, what am Off I? Ring bowl. The pentagram. You know. Emily Charlie Kirk says Emily Core is the four person on the Trump grand jury in Georgia really putting the witch in witch. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, that, we're in a simulation. I'm sorry. Yeah. You, you, know, you can't. I'm sorry. We're in a simulation. Can you go back up to the first picture? There's you. You can't. You're not going to convince me. This is. Uh, that all of this is just like random chance. Moon that Trump ritual. is like it's a witch hunt, and then they actually have a jury four person who's a witch. And like, that's, that's on, who they man. choose to interview, it's and that, that's who they chose to interview too. And I, hold on a second, how do you choose a grand jury four person who has an Instagram about witchcraft? I might have an answer for you, but <laughs> are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, we have to go back to uh, show 26. Uh, oh, okay. Tw- 12. If you like to participate in the ritual that's been making the rounds online, members from the Coven of the Raven Moon say this is all you're oh, yeah. going to need. But they tell me the ritual they're doing here is going to be a little bit different. Which is from the Coven of the Raven Moon say they're doing their part to make sure America doesn't end up watching its own horror story. So it is the end all squash all of all negativity and that's a beautiful thing. At midnight covens from around the world will be lending their energy to cast a spell on President President Trump. Right. High Priestess Amy Jean Gooseland says witches from her coven will be using a ritual that will help keep negativity out of the Oval Office. Basically what the spell does is it prevents the person in question from being able to draw energy from any negative sources and it prevents the person in question from being able to project any energy that is going to have negative or hurtful outcome on other people. And while the effects may not be immediate. Sometimes things can happen as soon as the next day, instantly, sometimes three months from now. Members of this coven say the binding spell will make room for more positive energy to flow into the White House. We do actually have coveners who are Trump supporters. They would not have a need to feel binding him was a hindrance because what it's going to stop him from doing isn't anything they should want him to do anyway. These coveners say it's just a matter of time before we see what's in the cards. Good health and prosperity and abundance for everybody and that I think that it is all there to be had for all of us and um, all hail Coven of the Raven Moon. Blessed be the witches. In Flint, Miranda Parnell, NBC 25 News. Wow, I forgot all about that. Yes, the coven. They were. <laughs> Woo! How many more were on this grand jury? How many are in this? Is this a coven? Yeah, it sure sounds like it. I just find that strange that they have this witch, and she, she's the, this is their best case. And they roll her out, interview her, knowing her past. Knowing that she has witchcraft past, and and, and, it's, and it's no problem. Like you, like you even said yourself, how does this happen? How does she even become? First of all, how how can you be on the grand jury? They have selection, right? They have, I think don't they have selection process for grand jury? I would think so. I mean, because you got to you know will it down to yeah, a certain to, number. Get to weed out the nut jobs. Case well, they points. did a poor job. Yeah, wow. <laughs> unless unless it was, was by, it by design, purposeful. Yeah. The witches have been after 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 Trump for a while. I mean, ever since um, episode twenty six. Yes, <laughs> ever since then. Yeah. 
Wow. So, <laughs> so that's the end of the first block. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mo. This was good. I, I feel very up to speed now. I can't wait for the next development in the funny winter saga. All right. So moving to the next block. Um, this is um, topic change, everybody. Topic change. Yeah, to- Reset. This is, this, this, yeah. Have a drink. Yeah. Have a drink. Get some water. Get some, you know, have a sip of coffee or bourbon, whatever you need. We're going into a new topic. This is what potluck is all about. Yes. So this is B block B. Mm-hmm. And this is cocaine versus sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Uh, do we start with the first clip? What do we do? Yes. All right. Here, These days, it's the talk of TikTok. I just start dropping pounds left and right. The topic Ozempic has over 300 <laughs> million views. Yeah. Being on this medication has helped me tremendously with my health. With scores of users crediting the drug for their weight loss success. Ozempic is a drug you inject that's meant to improve blood sugar and help manage type 2 diabetes. But because one of the side effects is weight loss, Many are using it off-label, a trend that may have started in Hollywood. Talk show host Andy Cohen even recently tweeting, everyone is suddenly showing up 25 pounds lighter. What happens when they stop taking Ozempic? Since Ozempic's gone viral on social media, some doctors like Nancy Renama say they've been flooded with inquiries. It's become something very hot and heavy in Los Angeles, Beverly Hills. Ozempic's active ingredient, semeglutide, works by making you feel full longer. Doctors say it's similar to Wagovi, which has been approved for weight loss by the FDA and is produced by the same manufacturer, Novo Nordisk. When we asked the company about people using Ozempic to lose weight, it responded in a statement writing in part, we do not promote, suggest, or encourage off-label use of our medicines. The company adding Ozempic and Wagovi are not interchangeable. However, the FDA tells NBC News healthcare professionals can choose to prescribe drugs off label when medically appropriate. Well, this is good because this is my beat on the No yes, Agenda show, so I'm I'm very interested in this and I it, I'm hoping that we have a melanated opinion on this because that's the one thing you don't see is you don't see uh black women or men uh on the shows talking about Ozempic. Well, they're definitely being targeted. Oh, I, oh, I know, the, but you're, that's yeah. not what you're seeing. You are, except for Oprah, which has a right. whole other story. But otherwise, you just don't see that. It's all white women. Correct. And and what took my interest was there was a local news story that they were just promoting at the same time when they know about the side effects and possible. You know, impact of the side effects, Pancre- they were, pancreatitis, you know, right. all kinds of bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 what's it called? Lifelong diarrhea, blockage of the intestines, you know, all kind of weird stuff. At the same time, I saw a news story, and then they deleted it because I went back to find it because I put it on my watch list. They were promoting it to black women. Ah. I would have wanted that one. Yeah, no kidding. Well, right, right. I mean, it, it was like it was a matter of days they pulled it. It was Atlanta. Once again, Atlanta. <laughs> uh, well, especially because when they use the term uh, sugar, mm-hmm. you know, as, as opposed to diabetes and pressure oh, and, yep. and words like this, that to me is, I mean, I've learned that from the show. That is targeting black, black people. That, so, remember so, Big so Mama? Called, uh, so-called black people. <laughs> remember, Trump, remember Trump's, uh, uh, what was it, health? The bald black guy. And he was like, "Do it for mom. Ma- do it. We said, do it for Big Mama. <laughs> for Big Mama. Do it, do, it, do it for Pop Pop." He, and he, <laughs> oh man, hold on a second. <laughs> Where was that Pop? Oh, do I still have that uh, Pop Pop? Uh, while you look pop, it up, I, I, I'll tell you the reason why I brought that up was because he also too used the term sugar, and I find uh-huh. instead of diabetes, that's a, that's a cultural um, word that's used. You know. If, uh, interchangeably for the word diabetes. Mm-hmm. But the thing I find interesting is this. We're going to say you diabetes drugs so you won't catch diabetes. I mean, that's that's what they're basically saying. Oh, yeah. It's like, please don't don't worry about what you're eating. <laughs> right. But we're, we're just cutting to the chase. We're getting straight to the point you're going to be on it eventually if you keep eating that way. So why don't we sell it to you now? But I think there's something this is just my, um, once again, speculation. 
COVID-19 vaccine side effect, one of them is weight gain. I remember this when I was doing the doing the research for the COVID shows Mm -hmm. was weight gain. Then you have also you have being locked down as a side fast food as an option, (laughs) right? Yeah, fast. I think I have the pop pop thing here. Hold on, let me see. Okay, it's less likely to be under control and probably and are socially predisposed to coronavirus. Avoid alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. And call your friends and family. Check in on your mother. She wants to hear from you right now. And speaking of mothers, we need you to do this, if not for yourself, then for your abuela. Do it for your granddaddy. Do it for your big mama. Do it for your pop pop. (laughs) Yeah, baby. (laughs) Do it for your big mama. Do it for your pop pop. Yeah. All right. So. What we have here, we have, I think this Ozempic thing is, is just part of the binary death, death knell. That, and it's a great cover up because if you have people start dying, especially Hollywood celebrities of heart problems. You can just say, and, oh, Ozempic, Ozempic, Ozempic. Right. Yeah. It, it, I, we can't, we, can, we, won't, we don't know. It could have been the, we, we well, can't tell. It could have been the well, COVID-19 well, well, vaccine. We're, or, yeah. we're seeing this now. We're seeing the medical community. Completely mm-hmm. confused about the rise in cancer, particularly colon cancer, part of the gastro system, uh, colon cancer in younger people born in the 90s. And they say, oh, I can't figure it out. It could be something in the gut, could be something in the air. We, we have no idea. We can't figure out what it is. We have no idea. This is what they're constantly saying, but they can't deny the deaths that are taking place. So maybe this is more accurate, more actual than you think. So this is just like I'm just going with Occam's razor here. Today. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a it, if I was on the other side of this, this will be great. It, it covers the weight gain from COVID vaccine. Mm-hmm. It covers the heart problems, mm-hmm. and also we can't be sued because you can't say you took Ozempic. Yeah, it's you know a shot. we don't it's know that we it's yeah a shot. We, yeah it's a it's, shot. It's a shot. But I think the bigger issue is this. Is how we look at people that is, are addicted to food, mm-hmm. food addicts. Yep. We we call, we love to call them all kind of different other things in this. They're, uh, they're sugar addicts, really. It's sugar addicts. Right. Yeah. Well, it's sugar. It's well, it's a couple of different things. There's sugar, there's salt, yeah. and, and and there's also crunch, which we talked about the bliss bliss point, and I'm going to get there a little in a little bit. But what I want to do is listen to the patients. Because I have a couple clips of actual patients. And to prove your point that you just made, black women are not represented in these in these clips of people that suffer from food noise. Drugs like Wagovi and Ozempic are two medications that have become popular for their weight loss benefits. And their increased popularity has put a spotlight on terms like food chatter and food noise. It's the idea of being preoccupied with food or eating. And while the medications can come with a hefty price tag, patients say the drastic change in their relationship to food is worth it. I'm Kathleen, and I live in Mississippi. I'm Casey Mason. I live in North Vernon, Indiana. My name is Nancy Barnes. I live in New Iberia, Louisiana. In a year and a half, I have lost 107 pounds between taking Ozempic and Monjero. I thought everybody was like me and was hungry 24-7. Thought about food all the time. Thought about that cookie you didn't eat or you did eat. And I had no idea that there was such a thing as a normal appetite. The food noise stops. If you're a binge eater, the noise in your head stops. It is just so unbelievable. It ruled my whole day, every single day. You know, as soon as I woke up, what am I eating? As soon as I went to bed, I got to have the ice cream before I go to bed, or I got to have the cereal, or I got to have the snack. I just don't think about food anymore. Yeah, in my research, um, of course, this food noise came up as well, mm-hmm. and it's a real thing. And people were emailing me. It's so true. I have food noise. It's just, it's an addiction. That's what, that I had an addiction to uh, tobacco, and my favorite was tobacco with some holy herb. And, mm-hmm. and I would get the herb noise. <laughs> I get, oh, yes, time. And I would actually smoke instead of eat. So it's totally real. That's what an addiction is. Alcohol noise, coke noise, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, that's in your head. That's what addiction is. In 
from my research and from my own personal experience. But why is it that we say one addiction is okay? Yeah. Like, (laughs) for instance, like we talk about Hunter Biden. Oh, crackhead. He's a crackhead. He's a crackhead. But then you look at Chris Christie. He's a food head. Yeah. He's a food head. Well, no, the reason is because the two go hand in hand. The, what do you mean? The food industry and the pharmaceutical industry. The food industry keeps people sick and, mm-hmm. the, food in, and the big pharma keeps people barely alive to eat more of the sick food. That they, they admit this. I have clips somewhere, but they admit this, that those two go hand in hand. They are the ones that are lobbying together in Washington, D.C., yeah, we need we and, need more of this crap in food. Okay, that's good. Yeah, we can approve that. That'll be FDA approved. And then we need this stuff to, you know, to keep people alive from eating the crap. I'm paraphrasing, but that's no, no. I, I, I'm agreeing with I'm agreeing with, with what you're saying. So let's go back to the second part of food noise, and then I have uh, some commentary on the back end. So first off, I'd like to ask you if you could define what food noise is, according to physicians, and what causes it. Food noise or food chatter isn't a medical term per se, but these are patients, people who experience kind of constant noise in their brain. So they have a constant craving mind for food. So it's despite hunger and it doesn't necessarily relate to their weight either. So their food cravings kind of rule the day. They may have just eaten and they're looking forward or thinking about the next meal or the next snack. And as patients are being started on medications like Ozembic, like Wagobi, like Manjaro, for the first time in their lives, they're experiencing a quiet mind. They're going throughout their day without this constant food noise, food chatter. For some people, the food noise is constant. For some, it's non-existent. Is there some biological reason that some people experience different amounts of food noise? Well, I believe that there are a few reasons why we experience it. Number one is I believe our since our bodies are adapted to keep us basically exactly where we are, the status quo. So somebody who has insulin resistance, a patient who's struggling with obesity will have more of those hunger cues, less of the fullness cues. And so they may have more of the food noise and food chatter throughout the day. So biologically, we need to give ourselves a massive break because it's, it's physiologic, it's brain science <laughs> brain, brain science. science oreos are just as addictive as cocaine <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah that's brain science and it may be true i mean i know we've mocked that clip but when you listen to these people talk they're it's like a smoker or i'm saying a crackhead it's like did i smoke that last rock where's my next rock coming from and i'm, I'm being facetious but but i'm saying that It's amazing how in our human brain, we can mock people for certain addictions, but then other addictions, they're seen as sympathetic. And, you know, uh, uh, about the whole movement of fat is beautiful and it's a it's a disorder. You have a disease and, and you're healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy to be this fat. This is all part of it, Mo. This is all part of the PSYOP. And, and you laid it out yourself that there's these two uh, factions that says yeah. make them fat and then we're selling pills. Make them fat, we're selling pills. They need propaganda. So they say, hey, how do we, you know, how do we spin this that big is beautiful? Not saying that everybody needs to be the same. That's not what we're saying. No. What we're saying is but Lizzo the same is, way. Lizzo to, is not healthy. Period. Right. Period. And, and what, what, what I'm saying, I can't speak for you, is that why is it that we're not sympathetic to people that are overweight the same way we are saying, oh, the crack epidemic, it was created. You know, crack was created. You know, it was manufactured. Yeah, well, because yeah, you're right, because I am very sympathetic to it because I, I see exactly what's happening. I, I, I feel horrible for these people. I feel horrible for everybody because we've all been subjected to this crap that we're eating. And, and the real issue is the cognitive, cognitive dissonance of how we see one junkie and don't see the other junkie, but at the same time, we're sympathetic to one junkie, but not sympathetic to the other junkie. How, what, where in our mind do we get that from? I would say propaganda, yes. how they spin yes. these things. Yes. And really we're the victims <laughs> yes. because we should see these things the same way. We should see sugar just as bad as crack or cocaine or fentanyl. We should see salt the same way. I'm sure those two things have way more bodies 
than, than heroin, you know, and, and um, have a walk through any airport in the United States. Take a morning flight mm -hmm. and all you see is morbidly obese people lining up in front of Cinnabon, all that's available. Look at what's available at the airport and people are just zombified, just waiting in long lines. Oh, I can't wait to get it. Can't wait to get it. The Tina and I talk about this all the time. It's, Throw caffeine it's in there as well. Of you course, have people. Of course. Starbucks on every Starbucks is nothing but a crack house. Absolutely. That, and they line up around the corner. And what do you, you know? You, what, what do you think that new uh, the new McDonald's thing is all about? You know the new uh, what is it? Uh, Mac Astros, whatever. Yeah, I remember. I, yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, what, what that is is sugary drinks that are highly TikTokable mm -hmm. and that that feed the addiction. And it's a drive through. It's perfect. Well, it's perfect. Well, it's got everything. I'll do you one better. We've gone to even not what's in the cup, the cup itself. Look at the Stanley, <laughs> Stanley Cup addiction. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're fighting over cups. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, people, you are being propagandized. If you don't think the last show was important, I think you need to go listen to it again because yeah. you are being propagandized 24-7, 366 days a year on a leap year. And look at go ahead. look at any cable television station at night. We don't mm -hmm. really watch much anymore because we're just binging old shows now. Um, you'll see fast food, fast food, fast food, pharma, 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 fast food, fast food, fast food, pharma, pharma, pharma. And what is the pharma? It's weight loss and um, uh, SSRIs. Because when you starve yourself of nutrition, you're starving your brain of nutrition as well. This is why idiocracy is not such a crazy thought, not such a crazy movie. We are eating ourselves stupid. Now let's go back to brain science since you brought it up. Yeah. Um, we have to do a recap of what the bliss point is. And this is the secret of sugar. And make no mistake, the amount of sugar in our food is no accident. The food industry goes to great lengths to figure out what makes us crave a product. The exact combination of ingredients it calls the bliss point. You know, everybody asks, what is the bliss point? Dr. Howard Moskowitz. He's a longtime food industry consultant known as Dr. Bliss. The best way I can do it is to give you an example. Do you drink coffee with the sugar or with milk? With milk. So if you add more and more milk, you like it more and more, up to a certain point where you like it the most. And then add a little bit more milk and you say, oh, it's too milky in my gosh and add a lot more milk and it's horrid so it's goldilocks it's the middle it's the best one it's the level where you like that product the most a harvard trained mathematician moskowitz uses models to test people's reactions to different versions of a product once he's found the bliss point the product hits the shelves from soda pop to spaghetti sauce his magic makes money wow yeah, that's so good. The bliss point. Totally. Totally spot on. I mean, every, I drink my coffee black. No sugar or nothing. Just black, black, black. I, I'm a victim of it. Uh, I'm a victim when it comes to coffee. Yeah. My coffee has to be a certain way. And that's, that's my point. We all have our addictions. Yes, yes. And was, they know how to cater to it. I was going to say, so my... Once a week, I go, I play chess with this, with this dude here in town, and we go to mm -hmm. Java Ranch, and I have a cappuccino. And, and I have a cappuccino. So I drink my coffee black all the time. I have a cappuccino. I put in one packet of raw sugar. And, dude, I am, I am cracking myself out. And I, and I know it. I know it. I'm like, ah, oh, I feel so good now. And I'm playing some chess. And it's, it, and it's my bliss point right there. My, and not two packs of sugar, one pack. And the milk, whole milk which I never have in my coffee, I am drinking my crack. Totally. Well, well I, 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 I'm not to trump you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's okay. You please <laughs> but, do with, it, please. With, with, with addiction, but me and my wife, she bought this uh, cappuccino powder, powder from uh, Sam's Club. <laughs> powder. Why don't you just snort it? <laughs> yeah, powder. <laughs> powder. So w one day, uh, it's sitting in, it's sitting in the pantry forever because none of the kids drunk it or whatever. I think she bought it for like smoothies or whatever. Nobody drunk it. So I, I was short creamer one day and I put it in there mm -hmm. and my brain said, whoa, <laughs> yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And now we can't go without it. So it is, it is brain science, actually. It's yeah. true. It's brain science. It's we travel with this stuff. <laughs> Little oh, <wow>. baggies of it. <laughs> Little dime bags. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do you want some coffee? It's like, no, nah, we'll wait till we get home because we got it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm just saying that to say that we're all victim. Nobody escapes it. Well, it's sure some people out there escape. But they have, if, if it's media, if it's content, if they have your number and they know how to feed it to you. They know how you want it. And, and, and that is what it is. So let's go to the what the title was cocaine versus sugar. What's more addictive, cocaine or sugar? You'd think the sweet stuff found in cakes, breads, sodas, and chocolate would be easier to give up than a substance so dangerously addictive that it's illegal, right? Well, you might be surprised. In 2007, researchers at the University of Bordeaux conducted a study where they equipped rat cages with two levers. One lever gave the rats an intravenous hit of cocaine. The other gave them 20 seconds to drink sugar water. Before beginning the tests, rats were allowed to sample each lever twice to see how they liked it. Once the tests began, 94% of the rats chose the sugar-sweetened water. Interestingly, rats still preferred the sweetened water even when the researchers gradually increased the cocaine dose. When comparing the brains of food addicts to cocaine addicts side by side, the similarities are undeniable. MRI scans of the brain's activity reveal a massive spike in dopamine upon initial craving, high levels of anticipation but low levels of satisfaction on consumption. Basically, food addicts want sugar more than they actually enjoy eating it. Now I gotta play it again. Oreos are just as addictive as cocaine. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the supporting science behind that 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 uh clip. Totally. You know, um Tina went all carnivore mm-hmm. in November. And uh and you know, so I kind of went along, you know, from time to time. I like a potato, you know, so uh, this is not a problem. Lots of friends of ours are all carnivores. I like meat, no problem. But then, you know, we'll go over to a friend's house and they'll have a dessert. And she had a, this was the other night, and she had a dessert. I'm talking like a brownie and then some cream with uh, st- strawberries. She woke mm-hmm. up in the middle of the night with heart palpitations, brother. Heart palpitations. Because she has no sugar coming in, or very, very lightweight. Little. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I tell her. You lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and it, it, it bowled her over, you know, and the same as with wine, there's sugar in wine, there's sugar in potatoes, there's sugar in all kinds of stuff. And there's sugar in meat. Of course there is. Of course. So it's, yeah. And I think you're, you're so spot on with saying that this brain science is being applied to social media, to algos is being applied to everything. The, the bliss point is known. Well, I've played that clip before and it was in the previous show where we discussed the bliss point, but I, this is what happens when you only listen and you don't actually watch the video. This time I actually had to watch the video and there's this chart. And at the bottom of the chart, it says ingredients, sweetness, mm-hmm. spiciness. And then there's a third one. Texture. Oh, yeah. Taste and texture. You bet. Texture is a big one. Which I think the crunch, the sound itself gives you a Pavlovian response. That's Mm. why they said with Lay's chip, you can't just eat one. Mm. Because when you crunch down on that chip, it fires off the Pavlovian response in your brain to Mm. want another one. In fact, the commercials even have even accentuate the sound. Exactly. Yeah. And it, with pouring cereal, it's the same thing. Everybody yeah. knows. I just snap, said it. Hey, snap, crackle, and pop, kids. Right. But there's, it goes even further because even the packaging itself, I think that's why they went to this full crinkly bag <laughs> for all snacks. The reason why I know this is, and I didn't pay attention to this until I start owning a dog. Mm. Oh yes, the dog. The dog. The minute you put your hand into that bag that has that little treat, the dog is like, mm-hmm. comes from wherever they're at, <laughs> from a hundred miles away. Yes, <laughs> yes. So what they have us doing is, if the bag don't get you, then the crunch gets you. So basically, we're eating the bell and the Pavlovian and, and the Pavlovian response. We're eating the bell, and and trust me, I've I've. Like I said, I've seen this and I've yeah. even done it with the dog. Like I've just touched the bag <laughs> and here he comes because he's associated that mm. crinkle with the, with the, uh, 
with, with the, taste, the, um, the taste and the with texture. the taste. Yep. Now I had to make a confession with all this, you know, just to show I'm not participating in the cognitive dissonance. If people don't know, is I bought a snack distribution uh, business. I'm part of the problem and proud of it. Right. <laughs> I, I, and, and, and I've noticed like being on the, being on the block. Yeah. You know, in, you know, like on, in wire terms, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? When I'm on the block serving, I see women and men come down the aisle who's giving up their legs for wheels. Oh, brother. Due to yep. diabetes. Diabetes, yeah. And whatever else, whatever their ailments are, but they have to have their drug of choice. And they it's not like, oh, I'll just take nothing. No. They want their specific drug of choice because their brain has been tuned in to a frequency. Mm-hmm. So if you want to help me stop selling drugs, support the donate, show. Donate, donate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, mama. <laughs> I went all these years. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Repent. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's it, it, even way the grocery store set up is yeah. chips. Yeah. On the other side of the aisle is and, sodas. And let's not forget the colors. The colors. Oh, packaging the, is it? Oh, yeah. It's Disneyland, brother. You come and ah, oh, look at all those colors. Ooh, kids, kids. Yeah, and it's triggered by the cartoons they see and everything. It's all a big psyop. All of You're it. Right. Yeah, and, and and the way the grocery stores are set up, for the most part, you know, like I, I'm in the store, so it's, it format. Gave, it's it, a format. It's a format. It's a format. You have salty, then you have the sugary drinks on the other side. They're on the same aisle because you want, but just yeah, you want right. the salty and the and the sugary drink to offset. Bing bing. Mm-hmm. Then the next aisle is cereal, mm-hmm. which that's for the kids. You know, what I'm saying get your kitty crack, and then on the next uh, on the other side, the aisle is candy. They're letting you know. You're sitting there putting the candy yeah. and the c- cereal on the same aisle. Yeah. And that's what and, and honestly, Americans, we have been victimized because our taste buds are fried. <laughs> fried with a capital F. Yeah. And I didn't realize that until I started working with people outside the United States. And I'm like, Jesus, you're saying, how could you eat that? And it's like, eat what? You know, like it's something normal. Yeah. And it's like it's too sweet, like you were saying about Tina. You know what I'm saying? And once you either haven't been introduced to it or abstain from it. It becomes, you're saying, Very, in, it becomes apparent. Yeah, then you then you see yeah. how poisonous it really is. And but what do they blame in the rat? Oh, take the salt off the table. I'm not, you know, salt has its own issues, but it's not like sugar. And, and so, it's not the salt in the product. That's the thing. It's right. like it's not the same salt as when if you cook something, you add some pink Himalayan salt to it to yeah. taste. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, not the same thing. Not, this is definitely not the no. same as they're using <laughs> in the food. No, no. And and that's uh, what. Um, that's what MSG is. MSG is a form of salt. Yes. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a salt derivative, which actually literally affects your brain and makes you think what you're eating is tastier. And they tell you to stay away. But see, even with the branding, it's like, oh, MSG. We know, oh, well, stay away from MSG. No, no, no. Yeah, but have, no the, MSG. Sugar. have the sugar and salt. <laughs> right. Which actually salt gets a pass because nobody really talks about salt like that. Even like if, if people are aware, they say sugar. Maybe because diabetes is more uh, apparent, you know, when you suffer from it with the obesity that comes with it. Mm -hmm. But salt gets a pass. But it's amazing how we see that. But I want to go now into saying they found out that Ozempic not only cures fat. Cures more stuff. Mm -hmm. More stuff. There's been an explosive amount of buzz around the drugs Ozempic and Wagovi. I'm super excited with the 50 pounds that I've lost. Stories of dramatic weight loss plastered all over social media. Baby, the hype is real. The medications, both containing the compound semaglutide, make people feel fuller faster. But something else interesting seems to be happening. Countless testimonials online describing side effects, positive ones that aren't related to food at all. No longer have any desire to drink alcohol, someone writes. Another says, I used to vape like a demon. Quit cold turkey. This person comments, I used to buy scratch off and lotto tickets. I don't even think about it anymore. So technically, like my official diagnosis was morbidly obese. Jamel Corona started taking Wagovi over a year ago, losing 60 pounds since then. But that wasn't it. I would say one drink for me is equivalent to about four or five drinks. And how do you feel after having that one drink? Uh, The, I feel miserable. (laughs) Corona once considered herself a social drinker. 
Not anymore. Something in your in your mind is saying, yep, you're gonna be snoring. Mm, I'm just going to bypass. I, 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 You have no interest in alcohol. The Atlantic now asking the question, did scientists accidentally invent an anti-addiction drug? I got two stories before we mm-hmm. move on. So first one, when uh, John C. Dvorak and I did our first kind of big vaccine discovery back in, I want to say 20... 10, maybe 2012, and there was a, a like a Goldman Sachs medical conference, and everyone was presenting. They had it online, so I just downloaded PowerPoints, and it was like, vaccines are the future because A, you can't get sued for them, B, we're going to have vaccines for uh, anti-smoking, anti-cocaine, which of course has nothing to do with the what used to be the 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 tradition. They changed that in the dictionary. What what a vaccine used to mean, mm-hmm. uh, and it was great because we're giving people medication before they're even sick. But they were talking about exactly this um, uh, vaccination against. And make no mistake, these are vaccines. Uh, you know, they're injectables. Mm-hmm. The second point is, I was. Um, on Glenn Beck a while back, and this was before this was kind of known, and I'm saying, brother, uh, you know, they, they're, they're saying that this stuff cures alcoholism. People don't want to drink any, anymore. And he says, dude, as an alcoholic, because he's, he's been uh, a, you know, a non-drinking alcoholic for uh, 20 years, maybe. Mm-hmm. He says that what, you, what just came out of your mouth scares me to death. And he's right, because this is going to, I mean, for me, the logical conclusion is there's only two ways it can go. Either the food industry starts to kill people and blame it on Ozempic, which may be happening for other reasons, uh, or they, they, they find a new bliss point so we can sell even more sugar. And then this this stuff you know equalizes it somehow, so you can keep people even in a closer bliss point. Something is going to happen because we can't have people not using the products anymore. This has been a big Wall Street topic, and that's where I think Ozempic is being lined up because they're stepping on a lot of toes, big time. Even, even, big even time. though it's a big problem itself, or potentially a big problem itself. You're stepping on the alcohol industry's toes. Mm-hmm, You're stepping mm-hmm. on the food industry toes. Tobacco. You're step, tobacco industry toes. A lot of heavy hitters that's been along for Brown for a long time. And they're looking at, even with snacks, I think there was a report saying Walmart noticed their snack sales are down. Yep. Across the board. Yep. You just can't come in and start stepping on people's toes like that. And that's why I was like, maybe they're lining them up when people start falling dead potentially maybe possibly of side effects from the vaccine it's like oh no that's ozempic we yep. warned them you know and because it, it's going to be a, a, a significant overlap of people that Can took let, both let me ask you a question are you noticing mm-hmm. any decline in the business i can't say i am okay so because i mean because it's probably more i mean but when you look at when you zoom out <laughs> and walmart says i mean because it might be no walmart, you know, walmart is saying oh don't worry about it i mean yeah we're seeing a decrease but those people buy other products well what they're saying is we, you're gonna have to route your drug through our dope house aka our pharmacy mm-hmm. that's what they're saying yes. <laughs> like <laughs> yes, we're gonna exactly. take a hit you know what i'm saying we're yeah. gonna take a hit on the front end we'll you gotta give it, us some action on the back end yeah we'll make Pause. it up at the pharmacy stand inside walmart yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, that's uh, all it is you yeah. know what i'm saying like it's just and i know we're being flippant about it but it's true it, it, yeah, so quick, wow. I just want to cover this one. There's really no commentary needed. But this next clip just show you the cognitive dissonance I've talked about. 19. Tonight at West Columbus, McDonald's is back open after it was shut down by the health department. Inspectors were sent there to investigate a customer complaint of finding drug paraphernalia in her order bag. 10 TV's Lindsay Mills is live outside Columbus Public Health with more on what inspectors found that led to the decision to shut it down. Lindsay? Yolanda and Andrew, Columbus Public Health says it went there on that complaint and it discovered that there was a failure to protect food and equipment from contamination due to ongoing construction. Well, that issue has since been resolved. They say the store has reopened, but it was that customer complaint that sent them there in the first place. It was a pipe with 
heard Mark Swanning, it was an obvious crack pipe that was like kicked on the end. It's not what a West Columbus mother was expecting to find when she picked up her order at McDonald's on Harrisburg Pike. Hmm. So she found a crack pipe in her McDonald's bag. Yeah. <laughs> and the health department comes in and shuts McDonald's down. Now, all of a sudden, <laughs> you find what? That's the funniest thing. <laughs> We're shutting down <laughs> this drug found in the other drug uh, den. R- right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. But I just found that to be weird. Like, now you the pick and choosing of it. So let's just go through these <laughs> next four clips because to know the future, you had to look backwards. You remember oh, Fen Fen, right? I sure do. I sure I, do. That this, are we looking at Fen Fen too? Well, I want to refresh people how Fen Fen played out, and then maybe we can see predict how the future is going to go with uh, Ozempic. Short break coming up, and then the first Illinois lawsuit over Fen Fen. Meanwhile, with all of the concern over Fen Fen's safety, doctors are now turning to another popular drug as a diet alternative. The first Illinois lawsuit's been filed against the makers of Fen Fen. A Chicago law firm filed a class action suit today. It comes after the Food and Drug Administration last week urged the recall of Fen Fen because of studies that link it to heart problems. The manufacturers knew about these problems when they uh, tested it, uh, 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 experimented with it in Europe. And some European com- uh, countries actually banned the use of FenFen because of the adverse reactions. He says thousands of Americans may have been injured by FenFen and not even realize it. No reaction yet to the lawsuit from the manufacturers. You know, okay, mm. some side data here. Um... This, the main drug, Wagovi and um, Ozempic, is from Novo Nordisk. They're from Norway. Th- that company now has, uh, has a bigger income than the GDP of Norway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pfizer failed to make this drug. I'm thinking it would kind of, and, and of course, right now, you know, they spent in the, in the, in the last six months, Novo Nordisk spent $750 million on advertising in the U.S. In six months, advertising this, this drug, which a lot of what you see, hey, doc, you know, here's America's favorite doctor. Oh, this is great. Um, and there's always a little disclaimer on the side. Yeah, well, I killed some mice, but who cares? Just mice. Um, I'm thinking that, uh, that the American companies, they may be the ones to trigger you know, some, uh, some pointing to the death. Cause you know, what did Pfizer make? The death jab. <laughs> the death jab. <laughs> yeah, now you're picking up what I'm putting down yeah. here. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. They made the death jab. So, well, clearly it's gotta be something else. It's gotta be, it's gotta be the Ozempic that's killing everybody. It's the cure all. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the, it's the, you know, it's the magic shot. Not the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Be a uh, pun intended, but it's the, it covers our mistakes. Yep. It eliminates our uh, competition. I think you're making an excellent assertion here. And then we could come back with, you know, with the, with the uh, you know, the American, oh, yeah. the American, something you know, form of it. Yeah, something that works well. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It, it, just to move on. I, mean, it, I didn't know that. I didn't, the information that you gave, you're saying, told me about how much money they're making off of this. You know, uh, it's, that's, it's enormous. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's why. You know, Pfizer's stock dropped like a rock when they said, oh, well, our, um, our version of, uh, uh, of Ozempic failed. You know, and these guys, they'll put anything in a needle. You know, they're like, they don't care if it fails. So what is this all about? Oh, no, we're no good. It failed. And then, of course, because I've been following this on the Wall Street stuff. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, no, if, every, if you don't have one of these, this is, this is the platform. This is the drug of the future. This is what everybody's talking about. This is where all the money is. All the money's here until it, be, until it becomes Fen-Fen. And, then the, and that, that's the smoke and gun for me is that Pfizer failed. Really, Pfizer? I mean, they'll put anything into a, into a syringe. It, it's similar to how they did with, uh, uh, what was the other one? Um, the other vaccine company. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, J and J, Moderna, Moderna. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like all of a sudden, this small company out of nowhere, it's like it's like the test balloon. Mm-hmm. It's like so when you start to suing people or getting bad press, everybody associate mRNA with Moderna. Moderna, yeah, which you know their literal name. Uh, you know they came up with the mRNA. That's correct, like Moderna. Or did they? 
Well, yeah. it's like, let's kick it well, over yeah. to him. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually, yeah, well, you're right. You know, you're right. There are a lot of people who, who claim involvement and claim uh, patent rights, but it's Moderna's problem when it goes wrong. So there's one group that we left out of this. And in this next clip, this is from Jenny Jones, 1997, just, just to give people uh, the time frame when Fin Fin was really, you know, a big thing. And I remember uh, this. I remember, because I, I was... I was, you know, in business and, um, and it all, I remember the lawsuits. I was still kind of in television half and show business. I remember all this stuff. I remember it very it clearly. Worked. Yeah. Fin Fin worked. Cause yeah. I had a friend, you know, that was overweight and, um, and he took it. Luckily he didn't, you know, give him that I doubt know of, didn't give him any side effects, but it, it actually did what it was sold to do. But in this next clip, it's going to highlight one group, which we haven't mentioned yet. Cause you mentioned the doctors and you mentioned the food, uh, business people. The lawyers. And then, two, it's also going to highlight the fact that the people taking the drug may not care. <laughs> Probably not. So you could have heart damage and not have a clue that you have it. That's correct. And one of the purposes of the class action lawsuit is to set up a fund so every FenFen user can at least be properly tested to see if you have heart damage. And put it's Bethany an- in your pocket. Amy, it's you again. It's- <laughs> <laughs> on this panel because you make me sick my god if i was stricken right jenny if i was stricken right now with pph and they told me you're gonna die because of fen fen yeah i would not sue them because i was properly warned before i took it a lot of yeah. people what, 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 the doctors didn't even know this when they started prescribing that's Isn't correct that right? the, the doctors I wouldn't don't know second. What, Amy what, what, what this what this woman brought up before is what the manufacturers want you to think uh-huh. that 18 out of a million is the warning label that you signed will have minor symptoms what the studies that are coming out with are alarmingly higher. You may not know that you have a heart problem right now or a heart disease or pulmonary problem because you haven't been properly tested. Yeah. It's an echocardiogram, and that's the only way you're going to know it. The, My doctor this happened in Europe this. before. There was an epidemic between 1967 uh, 67 and 72. They banned it from European countries. Within 10 years after the epidemic, 50% of the people had died. These are facts. Yo. Repeating history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm actually just reading in the <clears throat> the book of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> Fen Fen also uh, purportedly uh, could remit alcohol and cocaine cravings. All the same. But I mean, they, these were, this, Fen Fen was more of a serotonin type mm-hmm. thing. Uh, but it's all brain science. It's all, it's all it- working on your brain. It is. Same stuff. Same, same idea. Same concept. Right, because I don't think food is a is a nutritional issue, and it's and, a brain issue. And I'll say from the reporting, we've also seen some counter or pre counter messaging, which is whatever you do, don't take the fake, don't get it compounded from a pharmacy. You know the GLP one, the semaglutide, mm-hmm. which you know you can get semaglutide. Um, don't, don't buy it from Canada or India cause you'll die. You know, Oh, it's not properly dosed. We have the, the, uh, our special needle, our special applicator. So the, uh, a lot of this is going to be when people start keeling over, well, they didn't take the good stuff. You know, they took the, they took the bad, the bad stuff, the off market, the black label stuff. That's what you're going to hear. That's going to be their first defense. And it's going to be a bonanza for attorneys as was Finn Finn. Yes. Is that Rocco? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Rocco. <laughs> you know the crazy thing? You never used to hear him before. That's no, how te- no. the, the sound quality is. is... <laughs> Did you rustle a bag or something? Because uh, he's ready for something. He's ready. He's ready for. Food. No, that's the, that's his <laughs> other uh, trigger. Uh, the, the 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 delivery truck backing up. Oh, so yeah. oh yeah, beep beep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phoebe's got the same. And you're right. We never used to hear Rocco. All right. All right. Uh, All right. Um, American Greed. American Greed. Yep. In Kentucky, three lawyers are helping themselves to the lion's share of a class action settlement involving the diet drug Fenfen. William Gatt, Shirley Cunningham, and Melbourne Mills have won a $200 million settlement against American home products. Of that $200 million, just $45 million, less than a quarter of the settlement, has gone to clients. The rest has been pocketed by the lawyers. It was extremely deceitful for the attorneys to take money away from people that were in such a vulnerable situation. I mean, this wasn't a lottery that you play the lottery and a big sum of money comes in and you ought to be happy what you get. 
these were people who had injuries. While their clients continue to suffer from heart problems related to Fen Fen, the attorneys are living it up. The two lawyers, Cunningham and Galleon, immediately used their newfound riches to entrench themselves in the two most dominant elements of culture in Kentucky, one horse racing and the other uh, University of Kentucky basketball. They become major donors to the university in exchange for the permanent right to buy front row seats at basketball games. They also become partners in a racing stable. In the home of the Kentucky Derby, Cunningham goes one step further with a 135-acre horse farm proudly displaying his ownership for the world to see. They felt like that they were untouchable. They, they had everything they wanted. They had everything they needed. They had race horses. They had airplanes. They had farms. Yeah, yeah it's America, baby. So that's the third Bonanza. leg of the stool. That's Bonanza. the third leg of the stool right <laughs> yeah. there is the, is the lawyers. And we got a lot of them. And they're ready. They are ready. And they missed out on the whole uh, COVID bonanza, COVID vaccine bonanza, yeah. the way the, the law was written, you know, where you couldn't sue the company. So they're they're You know, I'm, I'm curious now. I wonder, is Ozempic, um, what's the question I'm asking here? Is Ozempic? eligible under vaccination laws against lawsuits it's a long question let's see if i can get any answer um hmm i wonder i wonder if it's if it's because i think it has to be cost uh, classified as a biologic well I'm you just sure. inspired a thought in me because you you put the pfizer on, on the table which i didn't think of Will their version of it fall under this uh, protection? Oh, that's a good question. This is 23? It, no, no, no. I'm asking you. Like, I mean, because I never had that thought until you inspired it that maybe that's their, like, their lane. It's like, oh, Ozempic bad, but we have the addiction vaccine, which is the same science, but it falls well, under that protection. Here it is. Um, this is good RX health. Ozempic. Semaglutide is an injectable medication, so it's an injectable for type 2 diabetes. It is not considered a biologic. So, if it, so I think it's only the biologics that are exempt from lawsuits. So that'll be the fall of Ozempic and the rise of Pfizer's uh, replacement. Very possibly. Very possibly. Right. So the last clip in this set is uh, when you get a bad package... What do you do to it? You step on it. <laughs> it is the hope of tens of millions of Americans struggling to shed pounds, a drug that is safe and really works. More than two out of three adults, 68 percent, are obese or overweight in America. But finding a safe pill has been elusive. But there's news on that front tonight. And here's our senior medical editor, Dr. Richard Besser. It's a dietary supplement that curbs your craving. It is a holy grail in medicine, a safe and effective diet drug. There is a need for a new diet drug. Obesity is a serious health problem in the United States and worldwide. Unfortunately, we have very few treatments uh, that are effective and safe. Cunexa is the first of three diet drugs being reviewed this year. In preliminary results, Cunexa was shown to reduce weight by 12% in patients taking it for a year. The pill taken daily combines a seizure and migraine medication with fentermine. And if fentermine sounds familiar, you're right. It was half of the fen in the recalled diet drug Fenfen. Uh -oh. Though fentermine was not implicated in the serious side effects, including heart valve failure that led the FDA to pull Fenfen in 1997, the FDA will certainly be focused not just on whether the drug works, but on whether it is safe. If someone is promising something that is so powerful, so magic, that can cause you to lose weight, it probably has other consequences. Surgery is still the treatment with the most clear results for obesity, but it isn't without risks. And ultimately, experts caution any solution promised by pill or scalpel. Drugs cannot replace a diet and exercise. Yeah. So, so they just took half of the fin. Yeah. <laughs> and just repackaged it. I love it. So I think that's looking back um, over 25 years, almost 30 years ago, we had fin fin. If it holds true, 
I think that's how it will play out uh, with Ozempic. Wow. Short Novo, Novo Nordisk, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Not financial advice, but I'm just saying. No. I'm just saying. Wow. They got a lot of enemies. Yeah, they they got a lot of enemies. Do. Yes. Yeah, they do. Oh, wow. Well, well, we got a lot of friends, so you want to thank some people? Sure do. First, the white man and the black man have to be able to sit down at the same table. The white man has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of that Negro. And the so-called Negro has to feel free to speak his mind without hurting the feelings of the white man. Then they can bring the issues that are under the rug out on top of the table and take an intelligent approach to get the problem solved. That's the only way that they'll ever do it. Truer words never spoken. This is value for value. Uh, if you have never heard of value for value, you can go to value number four value dot info. There's a whole website that explains it, but it's pretty simple. Uh, we don't have any paywalls or subscriptions. We certainly don't have any ads. Can you imagine pharma advertising on this podcast? <laughs> Uh, we touch a lot of third rails, so you know the deplatforming would be very strong. There's just all kinds of reasons, and also it's gross. So we'd rather just ask you to support uh, support the show. So we give you the value up front, whatever it's worth to you. Just send it back to us. Time, talent, treasure. We love all kinds of ways that you send it back to us. Of course, treasure is absolutely needed to keep this going. We have, now in its current uh, version, but there's only going to be uh, four more shows. To come. Yep. And then this closes down and I don't know, Mo is going to tell me one day what, what the plan is and I hope <laughs> I'm involved. Um, now with all value for value, once you get through Christmas, things start to slow down. So it's a little shorter, um, this list today, but we really appreciate the people who stepped up. We want to thank them now. Our executive producers, which is a hundred dollars and above, um, and they will be listed in the credits and these are real credits accepted anyway. You can actually... You know, for those of you who have no agenda credits or credits from other shows, you can go to imdb.com. If you don't have a IMDb account, you can open it and you can, and this it's valid because there's hundreds in there, almost a thousand. You can say, I'm a producer of MoFax with Adam Curry, episode number 96 or number 95. And we want to thank the following. Trent Scovel, $125. Brother, thank you. He says, thank you both for the insight, knowledge, and perspective. Sir Scovey, Duke of the Piedmont. Ryan Tierney, one, two, three, four, five. Love that number. He says, thanks for another interesting episode. Uh, Mark Middleton, 120, no note. And then we drop right down to our associate executive producers. This is between 50 and 100. And we have 99. I have no name there. Mo, is it, that Nothing a- came in on that one. It is how PayPal sent it. So oh, okay. if, you, if anyone donated uh, $99, and you didn't get your recognition, please let us know and we'll make good on the next show because uh, PayPal did us dirty. Did us, uh, did us dirty. <laughs> Stiffed you. Did us dirty. Uh, Brian Richardson comes in with $53.33. He says, this is for a great show. Hashtag GBG. Do we have a panel? Give Blacks guns. You know it. Uh, Mahinga Silver, $50. No note, we thank you. Uh, no note from Summer Norris, but $50 as well. We thank you very much. Um, and this uh, this goes to the 25s for our social executive producers. Shea Delane, uh, 3333, the magic number, says uh, thank you very much for this highly educational podcast. Gentlemen, you are truly appreciated. Well, we appreciate you as well. Thank you very much, Shady Lane. And Drew Sample rounds out our associate executive producers with $25. We thank you and uh, the uh, executive producers. We'll be thanking the rest of the people under 25 and our boosters uh, who came in as well uh, by using a modern podcast app, which we suggest you use anyway because you get all kinds of benefits, including a transcript, which is completely searchable, which is great. And you're like, oh, man, you know, what, what, what were Adam and Mo talking about? What episode was that? You can find it. There's all kinds of tools now. We have the transcript database. Uh, so that's all podcasting 2.0. Um, also it's undeplatformable, so there's no way you can ever lose your, your favorite, uh, MoFax with Adam Curry. Um, video will be coming, but it's already here, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm bringing Mo over to the dark side of video. Um, mm-hmm. and also when, <laughs> you, yeah, you better believe it. Um, when, uh, when we update, if you're using a modern podcast app, you will get a notification within 90 seconds. No more waiting hours. And, you, you know, you see, I post it and people are like, you haven't uploaded to Apple yet. And that has nothing to do with me. That's Apple. That's just pure Apple. So go to podcastapps.com to support this show, mofax.com, or go to directly to the donation uh, portion of the website, which is mofundme.com, M-O-E-F-U-N-D. 
me.com. And thank you all very much, uh, our associate and, uh, and uh, executive and associate executive producers for producing episode number six of Mo Facts with Adam Curry. All right. So now we're in the C block. C block. Uh, this is another one of your beats. Uh, <laughs> aviation. As you notice, you're saying, <laughs> all right. Hey, yeah, I get to participate. Okay, good. And this, this is, this is, this is black skies. Um, <laughs> black skies. So we're going to cover, um, African, quote unquote, African Americans in aviation. The first clip is 25. That's correct. That's Meet airline captain Rochelle Jones, first yeah. officer yeah. Stephanie Grant, and flight attendants Diana Galloway and Robin Rogers. When they worked that ASA flight from Atlanta to Nashville this month, they never expected to make history. In fact, it was half and chance. And the original cat, first officer uh, became ill and was replaced with Stephanie. And then when I got to the cockpit and I saw Rochelle, we just met a few weeks prior. And uh, I was just ecstatic when I saw her in the air. We did not realize the uh, historic ramifications of it. We were just like, okay, this is going to be fun. But Captain Rochelle Jones got it right away. She and Stephanie in the cockpit, Diana and Robin in the cabin, all black, all female. I, I said, this, this could be a first for us, so let's be on our P's and Q's. Did it make work? even easier, even more fun. Oh yeah. yeah. It was I think we had a little more pep in our step. <laughs> <laughs> the pride, the pride. I think we were just so proud. Of. Ooh, oh, it's one of the one of the, the major sins, ladies, pride. Careful. Mhm. Careful. So, this has been all in the news of these uh black flight crews, black female. If you noticed, mm-hmm. this this hasn't been about black men. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Or, or, or even non-white men. This has been about black feet. That's how they lead. But I would like you to know that this clip is over 15, almost 15 years old. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Excellent. They're rehashing. They're, they're rehashing this because they have no, and when I say they, the people that's interested in propagandizing black people or so-called black people. This was, a, was, this was Obama era. Now, now is this, but this clip is 15 years old, right? At least. Yeah. This okay. was, it was posted, it was posted to YouTube 15 years ago. So it could be older. Well, I, I, I can, I can give you a little data on DEI in aviation. Okay. So I know a lot of military guys, Navy pilots, Air Force pilots, a lot of Navy pilots, actually. And when you leave service, and you're usually around 40 years old, you've done your time. I mean, uh, service in America is great because you get half your salary, you get a housing allowance for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can you know, live very comfortably, you know, doing another job. And um, so what do you do as a Navy pilot? You want to go and fly. This is what you do. And, and, you know, you can enter at a certain level. But I tell you, you can work your way up if you're... Flying a seven forty seven, this is three four hundred thousand dollars a year. These are very very good jobs. The problem is that all the airlines, except for I think uh, the transport, so DHL, FedEx, you know, though they they're not in on the DEI, mm-hmm. but you know, so you go to uh, job fairs where you know the specific aviation job fairs, unless you are gay. Black or female, you are pretty much guaranteed not to get a call back at all, regardless of your qualifications. I have five to 10 examples of that in my email from pilots who have confirmed this with me. So, so they are hiring based upon external factors. Um, gay not being necessarily an external factor, but they are, that's what they are looking for first and foremost. and. Mm-hmm. Typically, they have less flight hours and possibly qualifications than uh, the people I know. That said, I have flown with many women. Uh, my most recent flight instructor, Amy Lynn, woman, young woman, 24, uh, one of the best pilots I've ever flown with. So there is no distinction between a good pilot and whatever you are. You're a good pilot or you're not a good pilot in my book, period. Once again, from the first block, either you're qualified or you're not qualified. Right. It it doesn't matter. But the reason why I want to talk about this is, is a couple of different things. 
One, I think these airlines made a lot of pledges during the super duper DI period, you know, saying 2020 and which, around the era. Which they had to do, I think, as part of their bailouts. Correct. So I think they said they wanted to get it up. Uh, well, we'll get to the numbers that we get into the clips, but they wanted to see an increase in those groups you specified. Mm-hmm. My issue is who they're using as the lead <laughs> in this whole push. Now, once this all said and done, we'll see that black female pilots will be discredited. Of course. Due to this story. Of course. And their counterparts, whether it be gay people, or women, non-black women will actually reap the benefits. Now, this is 14 years ago. I think these women actually uh, earned and were qualified, you know, to get because it wasn't during the woke period. Now, I do think there was a bit of propaganda <laughs> in, in this yeah. because all of a sudden the captain gets sick. You yeah. know, it's kind of like, hey, Tom, can you... Um, can you help us out? You know, we're trying to make history here. Yeah. And it happened during black history month <laughs> and, and peak Obama, you know, when, when yeah, perfect. Yeah. So I think there was that, but I don't think these women were unqualified. It was the alley-oop, man. Right. Early so fast for, yeah. So fast forward. I think a lot of these people are unqualified, but try cause they're trying to meet the numbers that they set through the D the DI They plan. are certainly less qualified. Just less flight hours is literally less qualified. Well, let me explain my definition of unqualified. If you're less qualified than a other qualified uh, person, I, I ain't taking the chances. And that's the other part I want to get to. This is where people can you know, pat you on the back and, you know, oh, yeah, we're, we're team black. <laughs> we're team, you know, that kind of thing. But when you have somebody fly you through the air at four, five, six, I don't know, 600 miles an hour, how fast the plane goes. You want Sully is what you want. You want <laughs> Sully every single time. Right. Or, or, or Denzel Washington. I don't yeah. care if he's on blow. <laughs> I don't That's care. Right. He landed it, didn't he? Upside right. down, but he landed it. <laughs> right. I don't care. You would say, hey, you could be on, say, whatever. As long as you're, you know, I, you're going to get me from point A to point B. So I think, but you can't. You can't buffalo your way out of this one because there's only two people in control of that plane. Now it's, we have to stop being what Mary Fuller calls is tacky. You see what I'm saying? Because before it's like, oh, we could put somebody in this VP position, you know, and build a build a, uh, 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 barriers around them and safety rails mm. so they can't run the company off the <laughs> off yeah. the rails. Right. This but is in this different. situation, yeah. this is a, this is way different. Yeah. Because it's are they qualified or aren't they qualified? And I think the other comparison would be doctors. When we go into, you know, you open up my chest and, you know, and, and, and tinkering around in there, I don't want somebody <laughs> that's marginally qualified. I want right. the most qualified person. Right. So that's why I want to bring it up. But at, once again, as you brought up with Joy, uh, Joanne Reed's hair, I think this is to bait people into the conversation so then they could be pointed as, you know, however you want to, uh, paint them as so excuse me I said point but paint them as however you want to paint them mm. so I think there's a bit of uh, of there's plenty of propaganda but I think there's also some trolling into this because it, it pulls you you're saying it pulls you into the conversation so let's finish the second clip from 14 years ago and then we'll get into some more recent clips their history just happened to be during black history month whoa I was tingling about it this is great <laughs> it's like spectacular it still hasn't hit me now so it's I was just excited I called my mom my family and I said guess what happened today and Rochelle then- is the linchpin one of only 10 black female airline captains in the country she used to be a customer service agent for Delta piloting was never on her radar until a friend suggested it and it paid off and um, this was my goal to be here where I am today and I'm, I'm so happy of what I've accomplished yeah. as little girls they'd never seen anyone who looked like them piloting a plane but now for other little girls they're proof you really can be whatever you want to be fate may have a little bit to do with it but for everyone that will look at us as role models or look to aspire to be what we are today they need to know that it was hard work and dedication to get here young girls need to see that 
yes, they can be flight attendants, and yes, they can be pilots, and the sky is the limit. Literally. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so something I want to point out is the title says all the African American female flight crew, but everything they said after that, girls, 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 yep, yep, girls. Yep, yep. It is, it is the, the the race portion dropped off of it. Yeah. So this is that we open the door. <laughs> I, it, this has been a running theme for the life of the show. We open the door and end up holding it for everyone everybody else, else to go else in. Runs in. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Proof. And what it's going to end up doing is going to discredit qualified male and female pilots that are happen to be black. And see, this is where in a system of justice, you will have what at what were thirteen percent of the population. Mm. You will have thirteen percent of the pilots represent us that are qualified. Cause it'll be just the normal distribution. Yeah. The fact that you actually have to <laughs> nudge the numbers and manipulate the numbers, that's the real problem. And it this doesn't help anybody at all. No, no. Luckily, uh, Boeing is doing a fine job of uh, <laughs> of screwing up aviation. So right now, all focus is on that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because they got bolts missing and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, a wheel, like a wheel fell. It's like something every week, right? You know, it's <laughs> like a wheel falls off here. Well, I, I mean, think it was a plane fly. It was on fire in Miami. It could have been aliens. <laughs> could have been ten feet tall black aliens. I mean, but who knows? <laughs> Uh, it happened to be a Boeing plane that was a GE engine, but yeah, I mean, Bo- I mean, we literally have an airline today saying you are going to start looking at Airbus. I'm already suspecting sabotage at this point. It's like we've mm-hmm. we've been looking at that fight for a decade, you know, Air- Air- Airbus versus Boeing because it's big money, you know, it's big money. Well, I stated a long time ago when we had a brief conversation about aviation. That I think they're trying to get rid of the riffraff off of commercial airlines because commercial airlines have basically just turned into Greyhounds. <laughs> yeah. If you look at how history of flying was, used to have wear suits and no, what the, you know, white gloves for the girls. White gloves, yeah. yeah. I had a tie on, sure. So I think they're, it, but I think they're losing the battle. Because the way the system is made, built up, they have to have the volume of flights. Well, there's also, I mean, you just go on TikTok and see, you know, people like fighting and yelling at, at uh, cabin crew and all this stuff. It's, you know, the decorum has just gotten out of control. Hey, have you ever been to a Greyhound station? I mean, like that's uh, yes, literally. I, yes, I have. <laughs> yes. It's been a while, but yes, I have. And then when you factor in also what they're doing with the migrants and airports, mm-hmm. it's this, it's, is is. Is commercial aviation in this iteration over? And it's actually because like traveling on Greyhound used to be a uh, semi pleasurable event, or you know, um, when it first yeah, accept, acceptable. So I think that's where we're headed, and I'll continue on where I think it's going to go. But well, what now, you're, what you're seeing, Mo, is you're seeing mm-hmm. um, airlines like Jax J A X, which. Um, so those guys, they, they bought uh, regional jets. And so basically it's 20, 20 or 25 business class type chairs in one plane. And you don't go through the regular terminal. You go through the general aviation. So where the private jets are, so there's no TSA. Goggles, Curry. <laughs> Go- <laughs> oh, brother, I'm sorry. Never, <laughs> never fails. It never fails. I was waiting for one of those. Yeah, okay, I you, got my goggles on. <laughs> you and you, you in this future. Uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but, but let's go ahead and get into the new, quote unquote, new stories that they're running about the first black fill in the blank. Pull back a little bit. Whether it's inside a United Airlines flight simulator or flying the friendly skies, Mullis Ward has soared to new heights in aviation during her more than three decade long career. You know, I never started my career thinking I'm going to trailblaze. I I always just felt like I was going to do my job. In 1998, she became the first black woman captain at United Airlines and the first in the U.S. to fly commercial airplanes. But even before flying with United, she was a pioneer, the only woman to graduate in her Air Force pilot training class and the first black woman instructor pilot in the Air Force. People 
saw me in my flight suit and they were like, wait a minute, are you here for pilot training? I'm like, yes. They're like, we've never seen anyone like you. So that was the first time I had an awareness that uh, this was something uh, groundbreaking. She is now dedicated to bringing other women along for the ride. Yeah. She's, uh, so she, what, they, they said 1998? Yeah. What are we doing here? That, that's 10 years earlier than the clip of the all black <laughs> flight crew. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I'm just saying, no, I'm just showing you that we're celebrating that. This is a what they call a nothing burger. Yeah. Of but it's used as propaganda, and it's not used as one group might use it to celebrate their accomplishments, but the other group takes it as see, you know, and and it, I think and them taking it like that is part of the plan because then it puts you in the part of oh you don't like black pilots. Or you don't think black people are competent, yeah, which that's not the question yeah, at all. Basically, the airline industry has been taking competent people for a long time, regardless of what they look like. C- correct. Because you wouldn't have these stories. And believe me, I want I want an ex. I, you're an Air Force pilot. I don't care if you're purple. You're from the you flew you flew Air Force. You're good with me. I don't think anybody thought about that. You know what I'm saying? Before now. And, and that's no. the point is that they they're causing i want to call it faux outrage but it's manipulated outrage let's go with that term Uh, well and i'm 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 noticing this so there is outrage coming now and so there was there was this incident that took place uh, a couple months back and i actually i I avoided the clip on no agenda and i just Mm -hmm. people kept emailing it's di look at this you might have seen this clip so that's it's between an um, an examiner with a uh, someone who's going for a commercial check ride, so two competent pilots, and he asks for a a particular procedure, which is a short final, mm-hmm. which actually can mean different things in different situations, different type of aircraft. What he should have said is, "Hey, I'm doing a check ride. We're going to do a engine out uh, 180. We're going to land mid mid runway." Um, but he didn't say that. And then, so she's expecting him and she's, it's a busy airport. She's an air traffic controller. She's in the tower and, and she's expecting, she says, Hey, uh, you should be turning. And then, and then they both get into an argument on the radio, which is unprofessional in general. But then at a certain point she says, look, I Googled what this means. And, and it's a point, it's a point of contention. And because she said that, I, people lost their minds. This is DEI. She's Googling. She doesn't know what she's doing. But this lady was very competent at her job as an, as an aviator. I could say that. So there it's being the women in particular, but maybe black women are now being scapegoated just for DEI. Just red meat. (laughs) Red. Yeah. It's all red meat for, and of course DEI is crap. We don't want DEI in our lives, but now we're just taking anything. And then a very competent woman uh, who got sucked into an argument on the radio, which you just neither one of us should have done, nor the examiner. And they're both FAA employees, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, it's being touted as DEI and people are freaking out about it. So, so, so it's everything now is anti-DEI, which is good, but not everything qualifies as DEI. Right, and that's why I said DEI was stupid from the beginning, right. and it doesn't actually help it Anybody, actually hurts anybody. because it's just, yeah, it gives you the green light or the justification to disqualify whole swaths of people mm-hmm. because of how at the end of the day, corporations chose to run their business. Nobody went there with a gun to these airlines heads. No, nope. you know, maybe they did the Jesse Jackson thing. Like we'll do, you know, make yep. you seem like a racist if you don't, Maybe, but it's like at the end of the day, do it. I'm going to run my business the way I'm going to run it. Yeah. And if you feel like that will work, that's fine. But then you're going to have to justify me hiring unqualified people. And what this is, is just a bigger symptom of weak leadership is what this is. And and the fact that the airlines in the United States uh, are tied to the government, they always get bailed out. So, you know, there's, there's semi government organizations. Well, could the government have the, 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 now we, we, we just open another can of worms. Could this be government inspired? Yes. The same yes. way. Yes. Yes. Vaccine ma- mandates work. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Once again, it's not the people. You know, once again, it's not the people that's reaping the. Well, look at the alleged vac- benefits. Look, look at the vaccine mandate with uh, uh, 
with the airlines. Look at how many uh, pilots quit. They said, I'm done. I'll, I'll go fly somewhere else. I'm not going to fly I, for your airline. I was impacted by, by this because due to the CHIPS Act. It's like, if you want CHIPS Act Same money. Same thing. Yep. Then you got to do the vaccine. Yep. Right. So let's go ahead and get into the second part of the uh, number 28. There is something about trailblazing that's important. And it's not about uh, the status for yourself, but it's about the opportunities for people behind you. She plays a part in the ascension of female pilots. She is a flight Stop. evaluator at United. Yep. Female, female. pilots. Yep. Now, what's the what's the title? Now, this is the leg- this is the actual title of the video. Meet the first black female captain on a major U.S. airline. <laughs> Yeah. Why put black in there? When you, after that, you're going to just talk about female, female, female. Well, I think the algos pick it up quicker. Maybe. <laughs> just saying. All right, you can continue on. He is a flight evaluator at United's Flight Training Center and helps recruit through the United Aviate Academy. The flight school plans to train at least 5,000 new pilots by 2030, with the goal of at least half of them being women or people of color. My job Stop. is to make the road wide. Color people. No, listen. No, I want you to listen carefully what they said. 5,000 new pilots and half will meet, will be female to, or, pe- or people of color. Or gay, I think, as they said also. Oh, wait. 2030, <laughs> with the goal of at least half of them being women or people of color. My job was oh, to no, make the not gay. You, I, I got gay from you. It's all right. Not, trust, not, not like that. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. But that leads to what you were saying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to clip that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the people behind me, the, the job is to make the roads smoother. And so it should continue on and continue on until there are no more roads in. I mean, that's literally a quota. They have a quota. That's what they have. They have a quota. And that quota came from the government. Trust me. 2,500 of the 5,000 have to be female. Or, no, no, didn't even say that. Or. That's what I'm saying. Female or, or yeah. So it, that's, that you could hire uh, 5, 5, 25, men. Tw- Black men. 2,499. Well, no, it ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying, but you, you could hire 2,499 white women and one black man. And that side of the quota and no black women benefit from this. No, it's five. See how these quote, it, it's 5,000 Mo. Yeah. They said 5,000 and then half of those. Oh, let me hear that again. Yeah. And then the people behind me, the, the, the job is to make the roads smoother. And so it should continue on and continue on until there are no more roads anyway. You know, and, and no one is talking about. Hold on. Let me go back. I want to hear it. Now. It's by 2030. Flight School plans to train at least 5,000 new pilots by 2030, with the goal of at least half of them being women or people of color. My job was to make the road wider. And then the people behind me, the the, the job is to make the road smoother. And so it should continue on and continue on until there are no more roads anyway. You know, and and no one is talking about this because we've done it all. Back a little bit. And she has cleared the runway for the next generation of black women pilots to know this flight path is Who? possible. <laughs> back to black now. Yeah. You rap with black. You're yeah. saying start with black. Yeah, end with black. <clears throat> make it wide, mm-hmm. open to everybody. And like like this 5,000 number, I don't even know why they threw that number out there. Why don't they just say they have a quota of, of you know, hiring 2,500 um, minority pilots? Yep. So it, I'm, I'm highlighting people, this is how you are propagandized. The 5,000 number is unnecessary because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't add any uh, value or context to what you're saying. Just say 2,500 and then say amongst these groups. But no, they lead black, widen it out, and then wrap black. Yep. And guess who's going to be left holding the bag? <laughs> every time you hear, every time, and I'm, I'm going to jump a little way. Go ahead and get 32 ready because we need, I think we need to jump. You know, I just want to jump where we're going here. Because I think when people hear black aviation, this is what they think. 32. Announcing the arrival of the first airline (laughs) with Soul. Welcome aboard. Thank you for choosing the Soul plane. (laughs) 
from the time you arrive at the gate. You doing good? Yeah. You feel wonderful. Till the moment you meet the crew. Hey, Captain. At ease, ladies. We make sure you have an unforgettable flying experience. Peep out this little safety video we put together for you. Now that you got on, I'm playing. You'll be listening. You better just do as we say. You'll be listening. Sit tight and enjoy the flight. Kevin Hart. Mayday. Mayday. Tom Arnold. Oh, hey. D.L. Hughley. Damn. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I guess you can't have the lightning without the thunder. Method Man. What are you? Monique. And Snoop Dogg. What the hell's going on here? Man, I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> this is wonderful. I love this freaky stuff like this. Let's get the party is nonstop. Oh, no, you can't use that Let's get retarded. No, 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 they say that to rip you up. <laughs> Soul Blame. I don't know what you got in there, but we're going to find out. You want to say something? You want to say something? <laughs> I've never seen that. <laughs> I want that, to see that's it, what's man. imagined <clears throat> now when Soul you hear D.I. <laughs> And what it really was was 3T Airlines, tacky, trashy, and or terroristic. That's what it was. No, and yeah. I think that's what the, it, the, the what the imagery they're trying to paint. So I got one more. I got two more clips. One, I want to show you. 31. You can go ahead and queue it up. This is going to show you how bad off they are scraping the bowl for news stories on this topic. This is Delta flight attendant work, works with. Uh, it's not a historical uh, feat. It's just she happens to work with the first. Well, tonight, let's head out to Hartsville Jackson International Airport. There's a live look for you. It was a regular day at work for Delta flight attendant Felicia Kay until she showed up for her flight at Hartsville Jackson and she saw something she says she'd never seen before. We knew that our particular crew was African-American. We do have that periodically. And then our captain showed up and he was also African-American. And that's what uh, basically blew us away. We had not had that dynamic before. Yeah, Felicia has worked as a flight attendant for Delta for the past five years, but she says this was the first time she and her coworkers had ever flown with an all black crew. We've had an African-American crew, um, but we just hadn't had, we all hadn't experienced having the pilots as well um, and having the entire crew be uh, African-American. So it made me feel amazing. It made all of us um, feel amazing. And we felt that we wanted to capture that. Yeah, a lot of people agreed. Over 100,000 people have reacted wow. to Felicia's post where she shared this special moment. Felicia says she's excited to see the moment happen again thanks to the diversity of Delta offers. That's really cool. You can see why it did so well on social yeah, thanks to the diversity that Delta offers, it, it, they're still using it as a uh, marketing uh, marketing point how, there. How is that special when people have experienced it before that she's working with? How is it special? Well, it's not. It's bullcrap. In mm-hmm. fact, now, now let me tell you. Uh huh. Now I have I have my own issues with aviation, which we'll get to before this next clip or after this next clip. Um, so the CEO of United Airlines. He comes out and he's in drag <clears throat> and he's like, oh, and, the, and the, the whole drag crew. And my wife, who is very open and liberal, she says, I'm flying to New York to see uh, her daughter, my mm-hmm. stepdaughter. She said, I'm not flying United. Screw those guys. If that's what they're concerned about, what are they not concerned about? It's working in the opposite now. This is backfiring so massively. It's going to be a huge problem. Yes. People just this- want good pilots, and you also want good cabin crew because they're not there to serve your peanuts. They are there to get you out safely in an emergency. That's what, that's their job. That's all. That's it. And I think, like I said, I, I, I for one, I try to fly as little as possible. Mm-hmm. I try to leave the ground <laughs> as, as little as possible. I'm not uh, uh, against flying. But I mean, I just this is unnecessary risk for me. Well, I've been um, I've been a pilot since two thousand four, and yeah. um, two thousand four, two thousand six, long time. <clears throat> and with the uh, what's happened ever since uh, COVID, um, we have a shortage of pilots, and you know, pilots can fly a hundred hours a month. So the end of the month and the beginning of the month, you're always going to get uh, delays and cancellations because they literally don't have the flight crew. 
Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so maybe part of whatever this is, I just, I am sick and tired of delays. I am, I've been sick and tired of TSA and this phony, you know, especially now that, Hey, what you, you got no papers, you're an immigrant. Come on through. No problem. We got a special line for you. I'm, I'm so sick of it that I went back to flight school and I went back to get my uh, instrument rating so that I can fly for, you know, within 700 miles, I will fly myself. Now I take a, uh, uh, a, a flight instructor with me at all times as a safety pilot because I'm not 20 anymore. Right. Um, and it costs me um, $250 a flight hour. So it's not cheap, but it's not a private jet, you know, which will cost you $5,000 an hour. And I have flexibility. Um, I, you know, they, they'll pick, they fly the plane from Bernie, which is nearby, right to our airport here. I, I hop in and, you know, Tina is okay. She's not super happy. I mean, mm-hmm. she doesn't, she likes getting into the plane on stairs, not over the wing, but okay. <laughs> it has a parachute. This is what I always tell. It's got a parachute, baby. So it's okay. Because I'm sick and tired of all this crap. I'm sick and tired of the safety record. I'm sick and tired of the DEI. I'm sick and tired of the phony uh, TSA. I'm sick and tired of all of it. So I am lucky enough to be able to opt out because I've put a lot of time, effort, and money into getting my pilot's license. And before we move forward, I would like to say, shouts out to George, a good friend of mine, black guy, pilot. You know, he just, and he's not like, he didn't do it in the military, wherever he just picked it up. He was like, Hey, I'm, I'm going out to the, you know, take some classes. And went, now he went a to very, flight school and, uh, and got into the industry. And we, yeah, need, very, we, very need, com- we need more Georges, believe me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying like, this thing is just like, I, I know a guy that did that. So it's not special, you know, or, you know, um, but this is where you quoted a number of $5,000 for a private jet per hour, uh, uh per hour. Right. Uh, they're bringing it down, and this is where you can take your goggles off. 33. We have this entire private jet to ourselves, and I'm going to show you how I got it for just $500. I'm Mike, and welcome to Downey Live. They say the app is like the Uber for private jets. We're going to give it a try. I mean, in ways, it is very simple. You simply type in where you want to go, what dates you want to fly it, and it gives you a list of planes that are available for you on that date. And then you just pick the one that you want. But to rent a plane is still thousands of dollars. So how do we get a private jet for just $500? Well, that's my favorite part. You see, this flight takes advantage of a little something called a deadhead. When you charter a plane one way, the plane and the pilots still have to get back to their home base. Usually, it flies empty. That's called a deadhead. But Airbull has found a way to connect us with those empty seats at a hugely discounted rate. It's actually really clever. The whole experience front to back, being able to go curb to curb in no time flat. But here is our terminal. I mean, it looks like a small, cozy and rural airport terminal, but what I'm realizing is there's no one else here except us. What do we need to know about flying private? Because we've never done that before. Uh, So the pilot will come in. If there's any sort of customs, luggage information, baggage, he will sort that out. Okay. Then you guys are escorted out and on your way. Okay. How many? How much? How many liquids? How much liquids can I bring? (laughs) Thankfully, no limitations. No limits. Okay. Thanks. (laughs) So. Yeah, I actually built a business on deadheads Mm -hmm. uh, with helicopters, so I'm very familiar with this. It's not quite as easy as the YouTube video makes it look. I mean. You can't even get these deadheads from Austin um, on these apps. I've looked at all the apps. I've really, I've done, done the diligence. You're very beholden to times when they happen to be flying back and forth. And yeah, it's, I mean, yes, you can definitely have that experience for very little money. Now, typically, there's a lot of different variations of it. Um, there's a lot of flights where you'll wind up on a, you know, a nice private jet There'll be uh, eight other people, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and they make it kind of a club atmosphere. But yes, th- this is happening. The other version is Jax, which I mentioned earlier, which flies between uh, Austin, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta. I think they've added Florida and they have daily flights. And, and you know, it's about 500 bucks each way. So you're getting a very... I mean, honestly, it's not even about the in-flight experience as much as it is about 
not going through the regular airport. So, and, and that's the <clears throat> that's the thing I was pointed out. And I think not it's not only gonna be about private jets or private aviation. Well, it's gonna be about private aviation. That you're gonna have these little clubs. Yeah. yeah that's already um, happening for sure. Right. Where like we like we talked about with the policing. You're mm-hmm. not satisfied with uh yeah, <laughs> public yeah. provided policing. Yeah, yeah. You have privatized policing. So I think it's gonna be the same. I think this is gonna be the model of future for everything. Agreed. Uh where it's, we're not satisfied with what state level government or even um, federal level government is providing this. We'll, we'll have our own planes and groups and we'll work together in small groups, you know, to avoid limitations. And like in the clip, they said no limitations. That's, that's right. going to be the whole thing. So that's right. No, it's that's, that's coming. That's here. Uh, it's going to be uh, affordable for, for a, a large group of people. You don't have to be super rich anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and you're right. I mean, we're seeing what you, what you talked about years ago about policing. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's here. You know, it's like, Oh, here in Fredericksburg, are oh, we going to have private police? We're, you know, oh, you got a gated community. Good. You got, you got, uh, off duty cops working there, working the gate, no problem. And then, uh, in the, in the poor neighborhood, which we don't have here, but you know, go down to Kerrville drones, drones and, uh, eye in the sky and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. You were right, Mo. Sadly, you were right, but that's yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to be right. <laughs> escape like, that's from a, LA. That's where it, it is. That's a, that's a bittersweet thing. Is like, I don't want to be right about these things, <laughs> but I mean, it's it's what's the most logical thing. So yep. um, it's what it is. So that was the end of C. I guess we can thank some more people. We will. I like brand new money. I just I don't want any money around me. Is not. I'd almost rather have a, a new one than a brand than an old twenty. Now, that's kind of dumb, isn't it? but there's something about new money that excites you. You like hundred dollar bills? Oh yeah, I like oh. new money too. Oh, most beautiful thing on earth is a hundred dollar bill. I hadn't seen a woman as good looking as a hundred dollar bill. There's something about a hundred dollar bill that excites you. Well, no hundies in this segment, but we do have uh, people we want to thank, and uh, many of them did not include a note. Include a note, people. We love reading your notes. And yeah. here we go: Mark Asher, twenty four dollars and eighteen cents. Dustin Zimmer with twenty. Dodge Gaskill, who says, and "This is his name is Sir Dodge." He says, "Information overload. Love the last podcast. Thanks to both of you." Jennifer Cato, twenty dollars. Uh, no the next note. one is R E C A R Y. The letter C for twenty. Mo facts. And I'll do the next one as well. Leo R. I didn't want to put their name because their name wasn't like, I don't want to okay. say their whole name. Okay. And then it says, good show. Thank you All for right. $20. And I think you could pick up from there. Yeah, we got the tens here. Michael Talbot, David McNally, Bo Baldwin, Aaron Sneed, David Jones, SV, Benjamin Barlow, Vanessa Steinbach, and Kyle Tack. And then uh, on Christy Carlton, then Vincent Farrell came in with $5.55. What do you have? The for next was anonymous. Anonymous $5. Yep. Moises Hernandez, $4.20. We get the joke, brother. And for 11 as always, Terry, the human subscription Keller. We appreciate you very much. Now, to the people who are using a modern podcast app, which is the future. I'm telling you, this is the future. Uh, we want to thank. They, you can send a, a little note along with your, um, along with your boost. Uh, which And if you've never used this before, Fountain is a great way to... Uh, uh, to test it out because you can actually earn um, uh, satoshis, which is the the value unit that these uh, that these apps use. You can earn that uh, from just by listening to other podcasts, and you can send it to your favorite podcast, like Mo Facts with Adam Curry. Merlin comes in with two boosts um, of twenty three thousand five hundred and fifty six satoshis. So that's just under ten dollars. Both we appreciate it. Uh, twenty two two twenty two. What we call a row of ducks. Uh, that is from, let me see, is it nukes are fake? All can be explained with mustard gas and napalm. Read Hiroshima, revisited by Dr. Michael Parmel. Thanks for another great episode, boys. That's from Clude. And uh, we have Jeremy73 with 10,000 Satoshis. Says, love everything you guys do. Dee's Laughs, Dee's Laughs, also in the value verse, value for value music mixes. We love what he does. End of show for no agenda. 10,000 Satoshis. Great topic and research. Always glad to hear your take on the war. As much love to you and the fam. Yes, well, that, of course, was for the previous episode. V for V, episode 29 from Ace Ackerman with a boob donation, 8008. We have Gebu with 8008. You are appreciated. Then we have V for V for episode 95 from Ace Ackerman with 8008. We have Bad Career Advice. (laughs) 
<laughs> bad career advice boosted us with, uh, that's bad career advice, Chad, actually, with 8,000 sats, draining the wallet for the best Christmas surprise a guy could ask for. Yeah, it came one, one, two days after Christmas. Uh, Mark C., these just keep getting better. 5005 from him. Winnie Wolf says legit 5,000 sats. V for V from the dish with 5,000 sats. 5,000 from TW Cattle. Thanks for some truth to end 2023 with. Um, 3333 from Gene Everett. Josh ain't jumping in. Mo, you're saying they'll take him at convention after Trump wins primary, but something happens in between? No, what I'm saying is that I believe that. You see how hard they're going after Trump with yep. this whole Fonnie Willis thing? Oh, yeah. I think he has no enemies on both sides. And I think the natural step in will be Josh because Josh is was better than any of these people. Nikki, <laughs> H- I mean, look at who they put up. Nikki Haley, hmm. um, um, uh, uh, Ron DeSantis. All, he was bet- He would have been more competition for Trump. And he has the he's been a good soldier to Trump. And he has the January 6th credentials. So he would be the best person to step in if they decide to get rid of Trump. That's my that's my theory. Well, right now, the whole world seems to be 40, 45 or 47. That's and I think sure. that's the problem. Yeah. It, like, <laughs> and really, the Republicans don't want the headache of having a what you call a lame duck Trump. <clears throat> did you know? He- did you hear this? Uh, this hidden microphone video from Carrie Lake? Yes, I did. What'd you think? The Boulay phone. What, what did you think? That's the Boulay phone. Like, hey. Well, no, she got the Boulay phone, but she said yeah. no. Yeah, because she understands that loyalty to 45 is better for her you know, than, than, than you know, a bag of money. What do you think about the timing of the release? First of all, it was professional. So this was not a mistake. You know, like this is not an iPhone under a jacket. This was professionally recorded. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what do you think about the timing of it now? I haven't looked that much into it. What, what are you thinking? VP? Possibly. VP all the way. Po- I mean, because everybody showed their hand against him, so mm-hmm. you can't use any of those people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it shows, and it, it also blows up the, the GOP. Look at how corrupt they are. And she would you know, be an excellent uh, debate for Kamala, uh, for Kamala. Yeah, that, that would be yeah because yeah, she actually can you know she has great communication skills which yeah. I think that's where a weak point for Kamala Harris is we shall see what comes of it um white B 789 33 Mo when we went in and Molly Molly whooped Iraq I had snot shoot out of my nose at work <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, Molly whopped. Molly, Molly whopped. It says whooped, but Molly whopped. Okay. Mm-hmm. Molly whopped. Yes. Uh, took to Yuk Tuk 73 with a row of sticks. 1111. Uh, Dave P with a thousand. Amused with a thousand. Thank you. Top H4471 with a thousand. 500 from uh, user 3725678. Change your username. 500 from Anonymous. Never understood the prevalence of murder and suffering in entertainment. Lord of the Rings trilogy was over six hours, but probably less than 30 minutes devoted to how great the Shire was before everything went to crap. Okay. Uh, five, uh, let me see, where are we here? 400 from Cooped Up KY, 400 from Casey, 333 from Gene Everett, Joel W comes back in with, the, with 33, 333, uh, 111 from Sumquak, a lot of them actually. Thank you very much. And uh, Mary Oscar uh, from our Oscar Mary, who runs the Fountain app himself with a couple of 100s. Thank you all so much for supporting us here at MoFax with Adam Curry. Again, you can do that with the modern podcast app. Go to podcastapps.com. Yep, we got that domain. Uh, grab one. There's 15 of them that have this capability. And of course, we appreciate your uh, your fiat fund coupons, your PayPal, which we end cash app. And we accept a couple of different ways, even checks to the P.O. box. Go to MoFax.com directly to the donation page, which is MoFundMe.com. And thank you again so much for your treasure on MoFax with Adam Curry, episode number 96. So we're into the D block and um, we wouldn't be a show without um, without our uh, show favorite, Nilly Fuller. So what he's going to talk about is he's going to talk about the term affirmative action. Uh, just to... It's kind of a bridge between C and D, and then we're going to talk about how, why words are important, and then also a propaganda. So 
This is uh, a firm. Yeah, this wraps it all up. This wraps. This up wraps the whole, it all up. The, the and actually, this line. wraps. And actually, this wraps up the last show and this show because hopefully, you've seen these are war tactics <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to yes. keep us busy, not talking about the things that we should be talking about, and at the expense of other human beings. All you can say is this point that. Affirmative action, all actions are are affirmative, or they couldn't be actions, and that is two types of affirmative action, and that is affirmative action for white supremacy and affirmative action against it, and this asks people, what, you know, which stand are you going to take? Now, in addition to that, I'm going to say this, the term itself never should have been coined, and everything was doomed when we allowed that term to be used with no definition because now everybody who's a left-handed tennis player <laughs> can ask for affirmative action. That's what everybody started doing. See, the gay rights movement and everybody else asking for affirmative action. Same thing that happened with civil rights. All rights are civil, but it wouldn't be rights. See, so they, anytime you slide it away from the white supremacy words, you're going to lose it. Yeah, this kind of wraps up a whole bunch of MoFax shows in general, that right there. Hopefully so. And like I said, it's it's these terms. We've talked about words being violence. And I think that's a hard concept for people to accept. But words are violent. When people lie to you, that's violence. And then also when they play mind tricks on your on you to make you lie to yourself. That's the most dangerous kind of violence. Interesting because, you know, I would disagree when people say you're being mean to me, your words are violence, Mm -hmm. but in your context, hmm, I don't know if it's violent. It may be, I would agree with violent versus Mm -hmm. violence. Well, no, I'm saying the actual is we've looked it up before the term Violence can be used as words. I mean, it, it, in the con- I understand what you're saying as far as people can say, "Oh, you hurt my feelings." And even in the context of malinformation, if you're using truth to hurt people's feelings, and I think that's what a lot of with DIE they mm, use a lot of mm, truth, mm-hmm. but weaponized it to be not effective in and you know and bring about justice. It was to shame and, and to and, and flame, you know what I'm saying, inflame situations. Yeah. So that's what I mean is that that's how I see words being used as violence. Yeah, we did look it up. And indeed, violence, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, actions or words that are intended to hurt people. Yeah. yeah. And which you could tell people the truth and it could hurt their feelings and you not intend to hurt their feelings. You know, then that's that's not violence. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying, and then this is where propaganda and words and violence overlap, right. because people will tell you the truth using propaganda, and we're going to get into that a little later in these next clips. But they can tell you the truth, but they know it's going to come across as hurtful. You know, that's like you telling, just say somebody that's overweight. Just stick to the topic of what the show we're talking, part of the show we talked about. Mm-hmm. If you say, "Hey, you're 350 pounds." And say it that way. Is it true? Yes, it is. But you said it in a way to hurt that person's feelings. Yeah. So that's that's what we were saying about but uh, about violence. But I think the real thing is when people use words to make you lie to yourself. And and as from Nilly Fuller's book, the only disrespect and only respect is self respect. When they start to play with your mind to where you stop respecting yourself. Amen. So I think that's the real, and and just take it because we're both believers. I think that's the issue Jesus had with the Sadducees and the Pharisees. It's like, yeah, y'all know the law, yeah. but y'all, you know, see, y'all find the loophole <laughs> yeah. to use it against people. Yeah. That's that's the issue, you know. Um, so I just, that's that's the thing. Like, so we'll get, but the, with this thing with affirmative action, he's going to get into why it was not a good idea. Uh, Thirty six. When you use minority, forget it. Everybody's a minority. People who, you know, get drunk on Saturday night, you know, on just a special brand of whiskey can be called a minority. 
And so we bought into it, and you asked the question, what can we do? We really can't do anything because we lost the word war right from the beginning by accepting terms that didn't make sense. For years, I went around screaming, you can't do nothing with a term like affirmative action. It doesn't have a definition. Racial integration doesn't have a definition. This is why you can't find a racially integrated black person. It has no definition. You can't quantify it. If you can't measure it, there's no way for you to do anything with it. It's amazing he's still alive. Man, we're so blessed. <laughs> I think it's because he, he lives in the truth. I mean, like, as much yeah. as you can. I mean, everybody lies to themselves at some point, but the focus on not lying to yourself is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really is hard. Um, and just to go back, I'm sure some people could listen to the show and like, well, Mo sound like he's beating up on black women or Mo sound like, and I get this all the time. No, it's the fact that these people have lied to you. They have used terms like the di- di- diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion, which mm-hmm. has no you, you, how are we measuring diversity. Uh, and then even even if we give you numbers, like we said about the five thousand, it's half of five thousand split amongst these <laughs> groups. Yeah. So how do we measure you know uh, uh, success in this situation? Right. So these are the kind of things. Like I said, this is the the mind screw. The same thing with the drugs and the same thing with how they're covering Trump and Fonnie Willis and those kind of things. All of this is meant to keep you spun up and it's a form of war. Yes. That's right. And I don't take war lightly. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I I live in this world and I could easily, it's one of the two things I could say. I could say, you know what? I ain't worried about it. I'm going to finish this show at 100. I'm done. I'm going to go live my life. I know what I know. And that's it. Or I could take it and say, okay, I can use my talents to work for the dark side. You know, if, if money was my intent. Oh, there is another option, Mo. We're hoping you take it. No, I'm saying, I mean, just saying, <laughs> if I if if I want to take the easy road, you were saying those would be the two easy roads. Like, I've done it, you know, bucket list chest up, checked off. I need to be concerned about me. But I realize that my children have to live in this world. My mm-hmm. friends have to live in this world. You know, mm-hmm. I made a relationship with a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, through this show, that have to live in this world. And I, and being a black male is kind of like being a black American. I've said this before, and I don't want to belabor the point, but I want to say this, is that uh, being a black American, we can understand what it's like to be white in the overall world because we're a minority inside this country the same the way the quote-unquote white people are minorities in the world. So we can understand how you feel as a minority. We get it. Mm-hmm. The same thing with being a black male. We can get it. You know, we 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 do uh, have. I don't even want to use the word privilege because it's not the right word, but being a man, certain things you can domineer over women like right as a black man, we can domineer over black women because we physically, you know, uh, we were more physically, you know, uh, stronger, bigger, that kind of thing. Mm hmm. But then we also can understand it's like, well, we know what it's like to be non-white in this world. And this system, and it's not about people, it's about the system. Everything, and I think people misconstrued it, and I want to make that very clear if it's the last show you time you hear from me. I'm not talking about white people. That's why I'm nearly full is not talking about white people. That's why it says three groups of people. There's white supremacists, white people, and non-white people. Yeah, and I, and I, I heard you... I don't think you've ever said it on the show, but white supremacy uh, is an operating system. It's an operating system. Yeah. The same way we look at, like I said, with the yeah. whole thing with the lawyers in there. Go ahead. You were going to say yeah, something. No, my, say, my bad. Yeah. Cory Booker is a part of white supremacy. Y- yes. And then nearly full of books. Anybody that works towards injustice is part of the system. Yeah. If you're not working towards dismantling the system. And <clears throat> here's another thing. It's not the fact that. I'm obsessed with white supremacy, as some people would say, we'll leave a name. No, I'm obsessed with, obsessed with justice. It just so happens that white supremacy is in the way of having justice. That's where the obsession comes from. I'm obsessed that with people not being mistreated. I can't stand the side of people who see people mistreated. I can't stand the side of see people that need the most help get the most help. That's what I'm obsessed with. Not, and it's just so happened that the system will 
a white supremacy in that way. And if you Thanos snap white people away, that void will be filled by another group that wants to appear on supremacy and that they will practice injustice. So I want to just want to clarify that right quick. Um, uh, but I guess, I guess, like I said, and they play these word games and these war games with words. Um, so and, let's get into, go, go, go no, ahead. No, no, go Sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying that, that, and that's why we come to propaganda. And really that's what this show, whole show was about is I just plucked these stories from social media. And all this is it. the, all it's the it. topic it's of the conversation. All propaganda. All of it. All of it. Which you're right. right. Is war tactic. War tactic. And, and you know what's crazy? In these next three clips, it's going to explain propaganda with using propaganda. <laughs> propaganda is ubiquitous and everyone uses propaganda. It's a kind of communication that makes a case for a goal bypassing reason. So what it does is it's a method to urge you to mobilize towards something while concealing from you things that you reasonably should think, should consider. Stop right there. Play that again. I wish you could play it have slow motion. You know what I'm saying? Really digest what he just said in that first part because it's important to when we play the other parts. Okay. Anyway, I was... I- who said that, I'm like, I wonder if I can slow that down. No, I don't have that capability. No, just- propaganda <laughs> is ubiquitous and everyone uses propaganda. It's a kind of communication that makes a case for a goal bypassing reason. So what it does is it's a method to urge you to mobilize towards something while concealing from you things that you reasonably should think. There you go. All right. So your brain is built to re- think reasonably. <laughs> That's how we're made. And it's like it, it, it short circuits or it hot wires your brain to say, are oh, we going to go around that reason and go straight to emotion? That's right. violence. Mm. That is violence. Cause it's like, give me the facts, give me the numbers and let me process it the way I process it. And then I'll make an informed decision on the information you give me. It's like, no, we're going to go around that reason because that's just inconvenient for us. And we want you to think like how we want you to think. And it works nine times out of 10. <laughs> it's yes, very, it does. Very effective. It works 10, it works, it works ten, ten times, times out of 10, out of 10. <laughs> for the people that are willing to let it work. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. Should consider. <laughs> We have these irrational biases, and what propaganda does is it takes notions like freedom, integrity, and it weds them to these irrational biases. Oh, man. It's like <laughs> Twitter is just filled with that every single second of the day. Yes. It is. Uh, want me to go to the next one? Well, that, well yeah, because we, we did a lot of talking that, on that. That, well, that, I, that I, was I, 37. I, yeah, so what I want people to do, listen to what he just said. You know, it goes around your brain saying it goes around your reason, you know, it gets you to think how we want you to think. And now listen to how, what he does in the next two clips. Operation Iraqi Freedom is what the Iraq war was called. Why was killing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Iraqis called Operation Iraqi Freedom? Because the idea was somehow freedom is what Americans do. If we're doing it, it must be freedom. The word propaganda by itself is neither good nor bad because we talk of abolitionist propaganda. We talk about the propaganda that people use in social movements. Social movements need propaganda. Martin Luther King Jr. talked about the need for propaganda because you need to get people to reconsider their racist assumptions. If you're doing a social movement that's trying to change people's attitudes towards, for example, gay marriage, you're going to have to use art. You're going to have to appeal to people's emotions to sort of undermine the biases they have. Yeah, propaganda. Um, (laughs) Pro-life, pro-choice. Nowhere is it killing babies or not killing babies. (laughs) Pro-life, pro-choice. And he just did it Uh because he he just said... 
propaganda goes around your 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 reason. And you're saying your reasonable thought. But he's like, for certain things, it's okay to do that. <laughs> but but then he 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 condemns the military in the United States government for doing it with Operation Freedom, Iraqi All Freedom. Right. Yep, yep. But then we said to come to gays and race and the abolition, it's okay. How about we just give it to the people straight? It's not okay to mistreat people. Yeah. Here's why. Mm-hmm. And then make you make you make an informed decision. If you say it's okay, then you are who you are. And that's fine. But when you try to manipulate people, once they realize and wake up, they've been manipulated, just like with this whole DI thing, it's going to be the pendulum's going to swing back the other way, which honestly, I think that's the whole goal. I think the system of white supremacy needs a fresh batch, fresh batch of racists. That's what they need. You know, it's kind of like y'all are getting soft out there. He, I, I, I think y'all buying into the equality thing. No, we can't have that. Or the system collapses. So what do we need to do? We need to dag on hold your nose like you do with a dog. You hold his nose in the poop <laughs> to get him to understand. <laughs> and that's what's being done. And that's why the orange, that's why I called it orange people. They're treating people that think like that, like co- people of color. Like Neil Fuller said, you're bad for business. Yep. You're bad for business of white supremacy. You don't want to, you don't want to mistreat people. What kind, what kind of person are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, we got this nice system going that runs off mistreatment. Yeah, you don't want to play yeah, a part in that? you make a good point, and I think you're right. And, and, of course, all things backfire. Pendulum is a pendulum because it swings. And and you're right. I mean, this is I even said it myself. It's like, oh, everything's DEI now. Everything that messes up is DEI. Therefore, the people who are been hired under DEI are no good. And they're a danger to us because they're... They're in airplanes now. Mm-hmm. Wow. Propaganda is cool. Wish, wish their message, and that's why I can step in and say, hey, orange people, don't, I mean, not, not, not orange people, the people that's trying to, you know, they're trying to manipulate, don't fall for it. Because mm-hmm. by design, they want you to, you know, saying, be racist. They need you to be racist. Because if the race conversation collapses, then we go to justice. And if we go to justice, then this whole charade collapses. Yeah, it upsets me. It really irks me. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 I hate to see people mistreated all the way around. I, I've never been that kind of person uh, to be, you know, not to be sound like a saint, but I just never sits well with me. It's like if you beat somebody, beat them. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to have a war, let's have a war. You know what I'm saying? Get your guns. We'll get our guns. Let's go out in this field. Let's kill each other. And whoever got the more people left, that's the person that won. <laughs> if that's what you want to have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All this sneaky stuff it ain't right i don't like it well the 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 best propaganda is is war is always war i mean we have uh, ukraine versus russia i mean oh my god that's nothing but propaganda and now we have um you know we have a uh, genocide joe mm-hmm. supporting israel <laughs> it's great when you see it it's, it really becomes quite funny it it is it's comical yeah I mean, it has dire, <laughs> it had dire consequences, but there's a, there's a gallows humor to it well, that's because me. it's like y'all are still, <laughs> yeah. Cause that's me too. Cause it's like, you're still falling for it. Yeah. And then the people say, oh, the Jews are running the world yeah, or, yeah. you know, or these are people <laughs> are running the world, but who are they asking for help? Who are Israel turning to the crown? Yeah. Who is you know, saying, uh, uh, the Muslims turning to the crown? They're yeah. saying, daddy, come fix it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I'm sorry. Not everybody <laughs> understands that. <laughs> it's it, it, it's taken a lot of learning, a lot of mo faxes to get there. I, I it's really the cloud. Of, it. It's the cloud of what they call the fog of war. I mm-hmm. mean, that's literally you know. I mean, when you're in the thick of it, and that's what on uh, the, the last episode he was saying, going up the mountain. Yeah. You know, as you get a further away from the battlefield, you can kind of see it. That's how I suggest people to be. Not say not go on social media or whatever else, but take ten steps back from it. Like with art, you can't really appreciate art until you step back from it and, and get the, you know, the full picture, you know, and then, then you comment. Sometimes that's why these shows take so long. Cause like, hold on, even I, you know what I'm saying? It's luckily I've been blessed with a partner, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it allow, you know what I'm saying? It allows me to process, you know, cause you, 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 you're the power father. You say, Hey, podcast need to be on a, on a time schedule. But I'm like, for what I'm doing, I you don't want to hear me talk about something right when I process it. No, no, I'd much rather you process it. That's for sure. 
because I'm the canary in the coal mine in a weird, weird way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, let me see it that way. Okay, let me see it that oh, way. But not even in a weird way. Yeah. I mean, you've always said from day one, this is what has always kept us very close, is, oh, we're just first, Adam. We're just first. Don't worry. You're next. And, yeah, I know. <laughs> and if, I mean, that's been apparent for years. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. And you, you know what I mean by you are next? Yeah, of course I do. The, the, the people, I'm gonna make, I know you do, but I'll make it clear for the people. If you're white and don't go along with the system of white supremacy, you're, you're next. a big problem. <laughs> you're next. <laughs> yeah. Because you got the resources and the racism thing don't work. You know, this whole, oh, don't listen to him because he's another race. Or don't listen to him because he's another gender. Or don't listen to him because they're another uh, sexuality preference. You know, when you sit here and say, hey, as, a, as you know, I don't sign on that system. You're a big problem and you have to be dealt with immediately. That's why I call it race trader. What's the penalty for trading? Being a trader. <laughs> it's right there in the words. <laughs> uh-huh. Huh? No, it's, it, it, it's really interesting to see how easily people are. I mean, I, I think it's still, they're still testing which way they want to, when I say they, the mm-hmm. operating system. Um, Cause man, they, they were so easy to flip on the Jews. Watch this. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what Auschwitz? What's World War II? No, 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 no. Watch us do this. Boom. Everyone's uh, hating the Zionists, whatever you want to call them. Tunnels. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would not fathom this 10 years ago. No. What's, what's ten, being un- ten unearthed? Months? No, 10 <laughs> months ago. I couldn't fathom this. This flipped on a dime, brother. That was amazing. They just flipped some switches. Oh, it's Genocide Joe. Oh, it, it, I mean, The whole no agenda social. I said, I don't want to be associated with any of this. People are out of control. It's N-words. It's Jews are responsible. It's uh, trannies. People just going insane. Insane. But I can understand because I understand what's be propagandized 24-7. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's just, they're just getting a dose of it. So it's weird to them. Mm-hmm. You know, I've had I've been living in this system for 43 years. So, you know, I, I have experience. But if you're being you, you've lived oblivious to it. And then all of a sudden you have Obama coming to office there because that's really where it started. Yeah. And then after that, you know. Just constant, constant pressure, pressure, pressure. And it's like, yeah, we're going to make white supremacy out of if it kills you. That's yep. how the system looks at it. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't want to belabor the point, but I just want to make that clear what's really going on here. And, if, you know, don't don't take the bait. And it's not going to be an easy road if you choose <laughs> no. to be just you choose justice. Yeah. It ain't no it ain't. No, it's not a, a walk in the park. Most can't. at all. Most can't. Most can't. Everyone gets tripped up, even if you're well aware. It's so it's so good. It's so good the way it's done. It's just good. It works. It's It's human. To be propagandized is probably ultimately human. And you know what? This is maybe a show for another day. I think it's very inhuman because in the Bible, not to beat people over the head with the Bible, but it said we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. So what the hell are we wrestling with then? (laughs) Good and evil. There it is. Mm -hmm. But even evil said that uh, Eve, hey. You know, look at that guy Adam over there. You know what I'm saying? Not to be, but that's you know what I'm saying. Like he, these are the only two people on the earth. And he was able to get in between them. Yep. So, like I said, I didn't want to belabor the point, but I just want to make that clear because I think people are are getting a bit too confused for my for my liking. <laughs> let's do uh, uh, one more one more propaganda clip here. Okay, let's go. You're going to have to appeal to people's emotions to sort of undermine the biases they have. And what other way do we have to undermine the biases they have by challenging those biases in often non-rational ways? You know, the goal in propaganda is to connect neutral words to other stuff. Propaganda will always be here. Our words always have these associations. Any word I have. When I talk about my cat, you get a warm, fuzzy feeling. The propaganda campaign involves connecting our words to these things. It's inevitable that people have these associations between words and images. Democracy involves having many such associations, having lots of different words and lots of different discussions that are happening. So we can kind of pick and choose among them. Yeah. All 
All right, so I mean, that just wraps it up about propaganda. I got one last clip just to show propaganda in action and how they try to <laughs> propagandize my people. Um, we know Charlemagne has been stepping on a lot of landmines lately. I don't know if intentional or unintentionally. Um, we throughout throughout the life of the show, I told you he's he's looking for a way out, um, but he's also a captive because of his past. So this is Charlemagne the Guard talking to uh, Joy Ann Reed. And uh, uh, I think Angela uh, Angela Rye is also there with him. She bleeds out the clip, and then Charlemagne finishes up. And this is propaganda about democracy. Well, here's what I want to say to you, Joy, um, and you know this too, because you've also been not just in the business, but in the business of serving the culture for so long. I have been in meeting after meeting, both on the Hill and off the Hill with the party mm -hmm. about their failure to reach their base, their most faithful base for years. This is not new information. I don't know why we're surprised. I don't know why folks are, they said, I'm not holding them accountable on segments with them and all of that. Lenard is not saying anything different than what I've heard members, including the past chairs of the Congressional Black Caucus, right. say to the party. They're saying you're not investing enough in our community. Find the lie. Jamie Harrison will tell you that that is indeed the case, that they right. are working on it to change it. So why are we upset when people are pointing out the facts? The facts are enough black consultants aren't hired. Tell me five black holsters you have. You can't because you have not created that bench. Tell me the black candidates that you have. You've been forced to ensure that that bench is growing by the Congressional Black Caucus. You tell me the number of consultants you hire. Tell me with a fact, with a straight face, that white boys don't run the Democratic Party. Mm. And I'll call you a lie all day long. Yeah. Now, that does not mean that we should go and support a fascist. I don't think that <laughs> either right. of us are saying that. And that's what mainstream media never reports me saying, because right. I'm never saying, I, I, I may talk about uh, Joe Biden and his shortcomings, but I also say Donald Trump is the end of democracy as we know it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you got to feel bad for him. Democracy. Trump is the end of democracy. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Whatever that means. Whatever that means. He is the end of democracy as we know it. It's such, you know, it's weak. It's weak. They, they it's need effective a, though. Yeah, they need a better line. They still need a better line. I mean, where, where you really, see, if you really want to see propaganda working, mm -hmm. flip on C-SPAN. In the morning, they have a call-in show, and they have Democrat line, Republican mm -hmm. line, Independent line. That was my daily listen on the work. Oh man, when, when I went to work, <laughs> and you just li and people call in and this, and the Democrat line. It's the end of democracy, and then the Republican line is it's like you know, uh, uh, Joe Biden is killing us with the border. I mean, everything. End, end of America. End of America. That's what, that, end of that, America. That's the, uh, the end of yeah. democracy and then the other end side, of the end of America. There you go. And the independents are, huh? <laughs> they don't even know what they're doing. It's, right. Can't it's we amazing. all just get along? Yeah. It's, that's, ama that's, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Mo, this has been a good show, man. I really like, I like, I also like the length of this show. Mm -hmm. We're just hitting three bucks here. It's really nice. I appreciate that. I, 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 I don't, like I said, I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't just appreciate you, Mo. I love you, brother. This is I, I love you too, bro. This is so much. This is fun for me. This is like this is my sugar right here. Eating sugar. Ah, this this gets me high. I love it. Hopefully, it is for uh, 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 for uh, the producers and sending new listeners as well because yeah. it's it's rare that you can have somebody sit down and have this conversation, put their emotions of fence to the side. And have an honest conversation. And uh, well, we have at least four more to go in this series. Support us. Support Mo. Support the work. MoFacts.com. MoFundMe.com goes directly to the donation page. Mo, thank you so much, brother. And as I always say, pay attention to everything and the truth will reveal itself. Conductor.
stop to thank your heart for being What if you had to stop and think for your lungs to start breathing? Hold up, hold up. Whole lot of people would be blue in the face. It's a marathon, not a sprint for the human race. Many of us on this planet moving at a foolish pace. Take for granted how the body needs time to rejuvenate. Wait, let me get my PowerPoint on, illustrate all the healing properties. That's your best real estate. Only stop to take a break here and there. Run around through the years, my body saw a lot of wear and tear. Being solid put a lot of stress on the joints while I get my therapist to massage my pressure points from sliding on the hoods of cars jumping over fences now it's like every week I go to see my dentist allergist nutritionist they call the zoo interest it's going for a walk in the sun it's momentous Securing bags is hysterical. You are the bag. You gon' stay rich if you take care of you. Material was not comparable. People stay dripped in dishonor, but they treat themselves terrible. It's effed up. Head to toe rocking Fendi. But when it comes time to eat, they go and buy Wendy's. Put trash in your body. That's not friendly. Niggas eat gas station hot dogs and back of Bentley's. When social media down, they get the shakes and become crippled by the pains of migraine headaches. Had to tie my locks off when they was at leg length And when I cut them all, felt like I dropped a dead weight Lift weight, sleep well, run a lot Treat your body like it's the only one that you got Cause it is. Say it with me, I am infinite wealth But it all starts out with loving yourself That's what it is Sir, we have a problem.